It's okay with you. I'm going to record this. So uh, if I need to refer back to it, I'll have a, a video. Um, do you want me to share my screen or are you going to share yours? Uh, I don't have anything to share. So yeah, if you want to share your screen. There you go. Okay. So you're going to need to install Arduino ID, if okay. not already done. On my computer? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to give you this. Okay. There's a chat box too if you want to send me that website. Oh, no, yeah. Nice. There you go. So you just need to click the Windows, well, whatever operating system you are running right now. So I'm going to go ahead and. Did you download Marlin? Um, no, I was doing some research, but I haven't actually yeah. done anything. I'm not a software. All right, so right here is where I download. We got Windows 11 64 bit. Windows 10 and newer 64 bits. Oh, and newer. Yeah. Just download. Just download. <laughs> you don't need to pay them. I don't know. That line is going to be better. What are the other links you sent me? You know, do I need to download this as well? Yeah, you're gonna need Marlin and the config to do it, so. Okay, which Marlin do I download? So you have the current Marlin release. You click on the 2.1.2.zip. This one or the, da oh, the download? The download, zip. yeah. Then you click on the view download. You, you saw just beside it. Those are the config for the Marlin software. Okay. Uh, click on code. Where's code? The green button. Oh, okay. And download zip. Uh, you can launch more uh, Arduino ID. Launch what? Arduino ID on the bottom. You can launch it. So what do you do for work? You're a draft. You do drafting. Yep. And I cannot say more than that uh, regarding the 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 non-disclosure agreement I have. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Well, yeah, I'm a draftsman. I work. Uh, well, my real job is I'm consulting and uh, I'm consultant draftsman. So what kind of consulting? 
Uh, well, I, I I work for a company that uh, if you need someone, a draftsman for like three months instead of hiring one, you just call us and we go there for three months or whatever the, oh, the, okay. line, the contract time you need. Oh, cool. So it's like a consulting job, but not really the same thing. What kind of computer do you use? Um, it's a huge gaming PC. Oh, okay. I have a Ryzen 9 5900X. Nice. The graphics card is a bit lacking. It's just a GTX 1060, 6 gigabytes. It's a big gaming, gaming rig. But for work, I don't use it since I'm logged in a distance through VPN. Yeah, well, I think 6 gig is plenty for most things, isn't it? It's not it's, like nothing. It's good enough. It's it's good enough. It's not the best. There's great, greater than that now. Yeah. Because, yeah, there's a lot of memory, but all the raw power behind it is a bit lacking versus the, let's say, the 3060 that are out now. Yeah, I think this is a, uh, I don't know. This is, I mean, I'm running the Lenovo um, Legends Pro 5 Pro, Pro 5, something like that. It was like ranked one of the top laptops of 2022. Legend but, uh, yeah, yeah, it's oh. got 64 gigs of RAM. The Ryzen 7, which is pretty much the biggest you can realistically fit or you can really benefit from on a laptop. Yeah, yeah, it goes over order than that. It's just gonna be throttled. So, yeah, and then it's got a 8 gigabyte graphics card, GeForce something. Mm. But I bet your computer, even though it might, well, it'll probably be able to, yeah, your graphics card probably would outperform it just because it can cool better. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And even there, the, the fans on the graphics card rarely runs. Is the way the PC is built to have like three fans at the bottom taking fresh air from under the case and there's the graphic card card just mm -hmm. on top of it. So the fan of the graphics card rarely spin. Oh okay. Uh you can run it. So if you need more time to manage your budget, John will have slides with no interest and no payments. A full year. No payments of any kind. None. John Moore pays for this. We don't just delay it, we pay it. A full year of reading room on us for you. Uh, on the Windows for the config release, you can click on configure. I want to do some of this, mate. I'll give you control here. If it's easier, um, you can use you can if you use your mouse, it will. Uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, you're uh, you're operating my computer now. Said she wasn't hungry. She only. But this isn't just a patty. This is a water burger. 
Uh, just one black for me on my side. Oh. Okay, sorry about that. Right. Install? Yeah, install. Oh. Gonna be a lot of little installed back to do. It's just normal installing a new program that has a lot of power. Oops, not what I wanted to do. Okay. Oh, oh, one black again. Yeah, it keeps it's a pop up. It's like every time oh. those permissions are asked. I see. This, this, this file here, the configure release. Let's say tomorrow you get another printer. You get uh, something different. Luna, go mm -hmm. away. Oh, Sorry, my cat is annoying. Okay. Uh, let's say tomorrow you get a uh, Prusa. You can go in that documents and you go in the example and you can look for the brand of printer you're looking for. So, no, oh, okay. Let's say you get a Prusa. You have the Prusa here and you can have like that different. Well, it's just the MK3, but like you could file the config everywhere. It's not a problem. Yeah. Have you started using the tree supports yet? I rarely use support. I try to avoid them as much as I can. Have you heard about the new, uh, the new like organic supports that they're yeah. doing? Yeah. Well, they technically the, um, Tree support is a bit on that side of, of things. So what? The tree support is a bit on that side. It's on the uh, on the organic side of of things. Yeah. But tree support they do work well when they they work. They are I mean using support to actually have. Just copy that. Yeah, kinda, you can save it to the desktop if you want. Yeah. I, I like the aesthetic of Windows 11. Oh, you haven't switched to Windows 11 yet? No. Yeah. Uh, I finally made the jump sometime at the end of last year. For me, it's easy. As soon as something new, program, car, uh, whatever... I wait at least a year before I get it. Yeah, but I think Windows 11's been out for a year now. Yeah, yeah. I should do the switch now. Yeah, I but... waited like maybe six or eight months. I waited quite a while before I made the switch. You wait so for I people. I thought just... it would be as stable or more stable than. Uh, I, I was checking on reviews of stability and, and watching people were saying about it being debugged and stuff, and then whenever. It seemed like it was on the up and up. I made the switch. Yeah. Well, I don't switch it because of gaming. Most of the time, the game are not yet working on Windows. On the oh, new interesting. Version. Yeah, it takes longer because the game dev are going to be working on on making the game work Windows, with Windows 11. And it can take a while. So that's why I never jump on the new version of Windows right ahead. But mm -hmm. I, I went from Windows XP to Windows 8.1 in one go. So it was quite a jump for me before, and I <laughs> won't do that again. Wow. Yeah, I've never skipped an operating system since I've had a combined computer. We could all have skip Vista, though. Yeah, well, Vista, Windows 8 was terrible. Windows 8? My first computer was running on Windows 8. Windows 8.1 was good I, enough. I, well, I had a shared computer when I when Vista was out, yeah. And I did not like Vista. As soon as Windows eight came out, 
No, it was Vista, then Windows 7. Yeah. Yeah. Windows um... 7 was good. I don't like it. Well, okay, when Windows 8 came out, the, yeah, the win- I Windows... one of my computers and I wasn't really excited about it. Windows 8 was bad, but 8.1 was better. It was more interesting to use than Windows 8 for sure. I just didn't like the way the menus are laid out. I never spent much time on Windows. Well, yeah, I think I tried to like, I don't remember. I, I spent as least amount of time on it as I could. Yeah, it's not it's not the best operating system. Seven, seven was great. Oh yeah, seven was great. I miss Windows Seven for the time I used it. Wow. What's that, my grandpa? Windows Ten, uh, you had no complaints about. Nope. All a bit in the beginning. This one, I jumped. I jumped on it too fast. But uh, since then, no problem with it. But I like the aesthetic of Windows Eleven. I think um, Windows 11 is just a reskin to Windows 10. It's not, well, I've heard it, it actually does run a little bit cleaner. Like you get more use out of your CPU yeah. and your graphics card, but. Um, That's about it. Yeah. Okay, so here we have the Marlin, the generic configuration.h. So. You see here in Marlin, like all all that stuff here, mm-hmm. all of that is important f- to run okay. Marlin because there's script like mostly in those in the library in the SRC file. Mm-hmm. There's script in those that you need, and you barely gonna touch them, barely. Yeah. So those configuration that age and advanced that age. Or basic, they have no setting in them. We don't need them because those are set up for Cartesian 3D printer. Right. So I'm just not a fan of those, though. You know, I can help you if you want to know what those tabs mean. If, if, uh... uh At first, be. I was really annoyed with them because I was like, "What the heck?" But once you learn what the icons are, then it's easy. Yeah. So now you have a basic program to run uh, the Delta printer. Oh, cool. Already have it. Yeah. So now you're going to have like everything that is Delta related for starting is going to be configured there. You don't have to change anything else. Here, okay. All the updates are done. That's good. We can close that. And now you can open Marlin again. So when you wanted to go play in your Marlin's firmware, like you right now, you only have one printer. Well, I've technically about two, but I don't plan to buy another another printer that I have to build. This is like way too much of a headache. <laughs> yeah, this one, this one is a is a headache. Come on, really? Yeah, I'm, I'm. I knew it was going to be a little bit of a challenge, but I figured it would take me a day or two to get through it. I've, I've got it. Well, I've got it to print, but not like haven't gotten it to calibrate and like have all the functionality. And I've been yeah. working on it. I guess I got it about two months ago. Yeah, so that, for that... the first week, I worked on it probably fifteen hours, and I. You had to work on another project. The way it came out of the out of the box, it works. It's not great, but at least it works. So now, if you want to work on it on the Marlin, you can just go on the file. You select Marlin right here. Okay. And the Marlin, the I know file, the I know. Okay. You can open it. It's gonna open Arduino for you. It's gonna do everything you need to go. And I just save that file to the desktop then. It's already saved there. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. It's above it. And the way Arduino works is you don't need to save every time. So you can work on it five minutes, close it, and come back later. It's already gonna be saved. Oh, cool. I don't do any coding, so oh, this you... is probably not something I'm going to be messing with. It's it's easy actually. 
So this page, you don't need to touch much, but if you need information, you need, uh, well, you have a, like a, a 20 minute video here to help you work. Oh, cool. And do stuff. Uh, you have help. Like the forum here, you can go ask question if you need help. Uh, That's cool. You have like a small help. You also have a wiki somewhere and stuff like that. So you can work in there. Then the version dot H, you're not going to touch it either. That's you don't touch. Well, you can change some stuff like Or you can make it edgy. You could change that. I have the bigger one, the 600 K 600. The 280. What? It's the K 200 and the K 280. Oh, okay. It's the built like the diameter. Oh, that's thing. right. That's right. Yeah. K Quarter S, you don't really need to change anything. Uh, configuration dot advent uh, advent dot h, you're gonna rarely change stuff in there. It can happen. You're gonna need to change stuff in there, but it's gonna be more specific stuff. It's not as big e two as a file. Um, The, 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 there's less stuff to change here. So the way it works, you change your config on configuration.h and each configuration you build in configuration.h, you can have the control of it on configuration advanced.h. So you activate it on one and you change the parameter on the other one for some stuff. Not everything is like that though. Hmm. So, well, here you could put your name, whatever as you want. Uh, when you start, what I said, when you define and undefined stuff, you just need to add the double slash before. So you see that line, how it's grayed out. Mm -hmm. If I remove the two slash in front, now it's in color. So now you know that line is defined. So whatever it is, that is, it's going to be uh, an active part now. I gotcha. Like, let's say you, can, you could also make a costume boot screen. So you would, if you have a costume boot screen, you just. Wait, so can I put my company name on the uh, config? Yeah, you could do that. So can we do like my product developer? Hey, you could do that. Uh, there's something I, I have to look. I oh, don't worry, but don't do it if it's the I don't want to take any more time to do it, but if we can just write it in there, that'd be cool. Well, I did it myself, <laughs> so it's not super long to do, uh, it's, it's, it's easy to do. Uh, just you got it to just want to reduce the. Uh, oh, there we go. That's better. I'm going to go steal some info from my Marlin. All right. Oh. Uh, serial port. What's your board? I don't know. Do I need to go look? Did you change the board on the printer? No. So it's the same original board? The MKS Gen, Gen L V1? I can go look. Will I be able to see it Look if I look at it? Do you think there's any reason to upgrade the board? Like, what do you, what do you benefit? Uh, mainly memory normally oh, but okay. this one the memory is there it's just the board i don't find it as stable as some other boards are oh i gotcha so my like crash 
Yeah, it, it might and might not. Uh, it's just the board is not super. Like I have an MKS Gen one point three on that printer mm -hmm. you see there. Kind of. On the sprinter, that's what I run. Never crashed, never had a problem on it. Always been a good board. Yeah, MKS true. Gen One. Like you can say it's not the board on the printer. Yeah. Because this one is dead. <laughs> oh, I gotcha. So you need to change the board. That's for sure. You don't need to change that. You don't need to change the bulge rate. Oh yeah. Uh, something I forgot to tell you. You might have that happen. If it does happen to you, don't know if you know what those things are. Those things goes on cable. So you, you may see it on some power cords at your place. Oh, I think I know you're talking about. It's like a magnet that goes on the cable. Yeah, it's a ferrite. So yeah, it yeah, that. Cable. Uh, if you're... If your screen start to glitch and has artifact, put that on it. It changed area. It fixed my glitch on my printer. Oh, interesting. What are they called? What? What are those things called that you put on there? Ferrite. Uh, it doesn't matter. Ferrite, yeah. I'll look it up. Ferrite core. Ferrite. Okay, so you never change your separate driver either? No. Okay, so if ever you change them because uh, you want to make the printer quieter, it's easy. It's those thing here on the board. Okay. Those are TMC two two oh nine. The two two oh eight I have. So if you want to change those, you just take the name you have on your list of what you bought and you just look here. You copy like let's say you would install TMC two two oh eight. Oh I gotcha. You copy that too instead of the A nine A four nine eighty eight. Copy that everywhere. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so coding is not hard. You just go one block by block. So right. you don't have you don't have any additional access. So you don't need to play with that. Because if you have a if def, the if def is gonna refer to any of those here that are not defined. So since those are not defined, you don't need to touch them. Okay. You have one extruder on your printer? Yeah. I think I'm going to leave it that way too. Perfect. Then fineman diameter, 1.75. Single nozzle. I think I want to design a new uh, cooling. Well, unless you have a good solution. Um, well. Design a cooling fan mount for the for the odd end, mechanical side for the odd end I actually have a new design here oh, okay. a new castle a new don't know what I did with the other parts they're somewhere on the desk just dark I can see it I, got, I printed everything I just found a model on Thingiverse and I printed everything so this way you can install BL Touch here so you can have a probe to go probe your build plate. Oh, nice. Because the, the one I have, it works fine. But the BL touch is, it's springy where it's mounted. So there's a lot of flex. I don't like that. And also the cooling fans, they are not working super well the way it's designed. There's a lot of obstruction. Right. So, okay, with the probe, do you have issues when you're printing? Does it ever get caught? Nope. No. no. Uh, BL touch, the way they work. Do you drag or something? Nope. Let me check. Like the Prusa ones, they're using a magnetic field. 
Yeah, the induction one. Yeah. Those might be okay. I had one here. Give me a sec. Yeah, there you go. Uh, sorry, my desk is a mess. There you go. So the way the BL touch work, that's a chip clone. So that's gonna be the BL touch, and there's a little needle here that pops out. Mm. So when you probe, the needle goes back up. So your nozzle always going to sit lower than the needle is. But when you need the needle, the needle is going to extend over the, the, the nozzle. Whoa. That's accurate. I wouldn't think you would have a hard time maintaining accuracy like that. No, no, not at all. It's super precise. It's crazy good. It's this thing. I mean... remove... This thing yeah. change, it, it removes a lot of headache versus the little. Well, it, it does basically the same job as the foam right. probe that you're using. No extruder parking. No parking. No tool heads change. Why don't you use the parking? The parking is uh, if you have multiple head, like you have like four print head. Oh, I got you. You need to go change them. That's the parking. Don't have a mixing extruder. Don't have a power supply control. I'm just gonna come firm on my side. Uh, thermal setting. All right. Now that's going to be a bit more interesting. There's a lot of nozzle, a lot of probe, a lot of stuff you can use to run a printer. Those are all different options you can have. But you're going to use the same thing as I do use. Uh, what's the minus one? Just gonna make sure it's the right thing. Yep. You just close that. Uh, Should be dead. Or is it five? I just, I'm just not sure of the thermal couple used in the printer, the stock printer. Mm. Yeah. Looks like all of one of the 
That's not that. Wait, is it? Let me check something. I'm going to grab some of you. Oh, a couple. Fake. It's take K. All right, that's it. That's that. All right. There we go. That is a one. Yeah, close out as well. Is it that? Oh, so it's a one then. All right, that's good. If if ever you change the extruder for E three D V six, I want to change it to a um. I guess I did on the slicer, but I want to change it to a a six mil or point six. Oh, the nozzle. That that's yeah. fine. But I mean the whole extruder, the the, the yeah. bit with the cooler and stuff. If you go with the genuine X E three D V six, you're gonna change the temp sensor zero for a five instead of a one because it's not the same okay. thermal couple you use. Because right yeah. now the thermal couple you use is the same as the one on the bed, so it's a hundred k home one. Gotcha. That's fine. It's fine. Did you upgrade your thermal coupler? I mean, did you upgrade your uh, your hot end? Yep. To uh, all my machine run a V6 right now. Yeah. It's for the price, it's the best. But uh, my big big belt, uh, my big uh, Anet in the back, I'm gonna change it for a Himera soon. What are you printing on your um, Delta? Uh, almost anything, actually. I mostly 3D printed this whole thing on it. That looks pretty good. 
Uh, I didn't do the sides here because those are too big. I did those on uh, my A net. Is that uh, what you did on your HE three D? Well, I'm losing spacers. This part was done on the HE three D. Mm hmm. Those roller too. Oh, nice. And a few more parts that are inside of it. But you don't. You didn't do the big parts on the HE three D. No, the 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 two sides panel were too big for that. I have a couple more parts, like this one. This one has been printed. You have on, a bigger printer than the HE three D. Yeah, my hand at the eight is uh, three hundred by three hundred millimeter. Oh wow. The HE three D was for the actual height. Right. Well, that's what actually what I bought it for too. I want to print a uh, RC airplane, so I need the height. Yeah, you you need the. Uh, the height. Um, yeah, I guess it, like even the endos and like pretty much everything has a bigger base volume. Yeah. Uh, I don't have control of your your PC anymore. Oh, sorry. I uh, wanted to see what you were showing. All right. One second. Let me turn it back on the. Uh... All right. Now you're back on. Perfect. Uh, the PY PID, you don't have it set up by default, or is it? Um, I don't know what a PID is. PID, that, that's um, that's a setup you could run on the printer, so it's gonna eat up your hot end and your bed in cycles. So the oh. PID, PID is what helps to control if you overshoot, undershoot the, the temperature. Okay. So and, do I need to program one in there? Or? No, no, it's all, all. How many lines of code is this? The whole thing? Yeah, a few, a few thousand. Oh shoot! This but is a lot different than what I thought we were gonna do. I thought we were gonna go into a program and type in a few numbers and upload it to the printer and be done. No, uh, no, no. Like no. Amazing that you were gonna be like, oh, here, here's the the values that you type into the software. It's a lot more than that. Tell it to configure, and it generates the the profile for you. I had no idea this is what we were getting into. Do you mind if I publish this, what we're doing? I want to find a way to publish this. Ah, no uh, problem. I might actually just take this and upload it as a YouTube video and then put a link to some, some software. Because yeah, no um, problem with that at all. Yeah. Like what you were talking about imputing line of codes was that M three oh three E minus one C eight S ninety. That's the type of thing you thought you were would be good doing tonight. I don't know what that means, but sure. Well if you I'm gonna give you another link. This one you're gonna love it actually. Marlin G code. Yeah, something like that. So those are all the G code. So I was talking about the M three O three. If we go look, M three O three. M three O three. And you click on it, it's gonna explain you what it is, what to do, and how to use it. Oh, okay. So when you have printer face install and you plug the printer on your PC and you connect printer face to the printer, then you're going to enter uh, commands like that to run the printer. Like one I like a lot is G34. So if we go see, well, it says mechanical gantry calibration. 
but since we run a delta, it's going to be actually uh, delta calibration, which is just the name change according to the environment, if it's a delta or a gantry type printer. But that's to, if it's on the Cartesian, the gantry can move up and down on both on the z-axis on both mm -hmm. sides independently. But on the delta, since you don't have that movement, instead it's going to use the same principle to m measure the tree tower's position. So you don't have to get a caliber out and measure your distance. Oh. So I've been mm -hmm. trying to figure out Whenever I built the put the delta together, the H E three D, um I I just connect like I I mean I went off of visual pictures, just obviously no documentation really. Mm -hmm. But then when I turned it on and it and all the motors seemed to be configured in the right orientation. Did it figure out its own orientation or is it you know what I mean? Like how does it know where the front and the back like, if I reversed two of the motors, would it have still worked? Or did mm -hmm. I just get lucky and everything? Oh, you like mean the installing the motor at the right place? Yeah, in the right place in the car. It, uh, so your tower, you have three motors, uh, one the stepper on every tower. When I say tower, it's the vertical beam that makes right. the triangle. Your left always going to be X. The the one in the back is always going to be Y, and the other one's always going to be Z. Okay, but how does it assign which one's in the front, back, and side? It's it's when you plug it on the board, because if you look on the every board. Oh, okay. Maybe I did follow somebody whenever I did it. Because it... yeah, I was following a build video. On yeah. every on every board, right beside the connector, there's like. Uh, well, you, my webcam is low res, but you can okay, see no X, Y, Z, e, e, zero, and E one. Yeah. So that's how you know where the cable go. Okay. Uh, just need P A D ten. I kind of want to just make my own uh, 3D printer from scratch and just now, like, knowing what I know right now because you uh, can make any size you want. I can, yeah, yeah, you, you, you know, can all the do that. mechanical parts and everything myself. So, well, you see, right beside this, com this printer, I also yeah. have a FL Cube 5, I think, I'm not sure of the name. Mm -hmm. I am actually going to transform this one into a CNC router. Oh, cool. Very cool. So the hardware is there. It's everything else that is not. Right, exactly. They have some maker bots that you can do. Like it's like one frame, and then you can either use it as a 3D printer, a laser cutter, a CNC. Yeah, that's not Drop maker. out the heads, yeah. There's a couple different platforms now, I think. Yeah, I yeah, it does. But they're expensive. They're like several thousand dollars. Oh yeah, they're they're not cheap. I might do it. Um, not now, but in the future. So I want to get a. I want to live on a sailboat one day, and uh, then I want to be able to make all the parts for the boat right there off of one machine. So if I'm sailing around and something breaks, I can just uh, cut a new part or print a new part, whatever I need. Yeah, and you should be good to do that. Yeah. So, or if another boat, you know, is stranded somewhere and they can't get the part, I can make it for them as well. Yep. Uh, where are you living? Um, at the moment I'm in Houston, but I spend most of my time traveling around the world. Oh, that's nice. Like I spent um uh, eight months. No, more than that. I spent maybe 10 months in Colombia last year. 
Wow. And I just spent a month in Peru. Wow, that's nice. Yeah. Um, so I spent most of my time in South America because of the time zone. I, I still work with my clients in the U.S. Yeah, that's really nice. You're a yeah. lucky guy, man. Yeah, if, are you looking for uh, remote work? I, that's already what I'm doing right now. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> and all you got to do is start buying airline tickets. <laughs> Uh, I do remote work, but sadly I have to log in from my IP address. Cause oh, I gotcha. Just to give you an idea, I have a double authenticator I have to use on my phone to connect to the job. Gotcha. It's a pain in the ass. Yeah. Uh, so good news. Now you're going to have thermal, uh, thermal runaway protection. Oh, good. Because I don't oh, know. If yeah. can... The first time I ran this thing up, I didn't have the thermometer, I guess, mounted correctly, and it was getting super hot, and it would shut off. Oh, so it did shut off. So it did yeah. have it before. Yeah. But now you 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 know you have it. There we go. Yeah. yeah. All right. Now we get in the meaty greedy of the situation. All right. So. Oh, it's G thirty three actually. Oh. So here's we want to define delta calibration, auto calibration. Okay, cool. So that's done now. You have it installed on a printer. Just gonna Okay, come... so that's the part that was not working where we we go to calibration. So before, as you know, whenever I would go to calibrate, it would run through the calibration but it wouldn't store it correctly I, at least this is my interpretation is that what you just fixed yeah now it's going to calibrate so it's going to calculate everything on the printer and trimming if the printer is at an angle it's going to know the printer is at an angle and it's going to compensate for that how would it know the printer what is, what is it using to measure that well because you know how you have all your end step at the top of the Right. The printer here, and mm -hmm. you only have a screw to adjust it. So it cannot be the same size for all three of them. So it's going to calculate that distance for all three of them. Mm -hmm. So now the printer is going to know exactly the space it has in between the hand step and the print bed in between okay. each corner. And with that, gotcha. it's going to know also if the printer is at an angle because it's going to probe many times. Around the printer. Oh, okay. Interesting. Very interesting. That's yeah. incredible. I can figure all that out. Printable radius, 140. That's fine. Max radius. I like to make it 130. You can change it later if you want. It just I have a 10 millimeter, a 5 millimeter. Oh, no. Okay, five, five millimeters from the top, basically. Was, uh, the print bed is going to be 10 millimeters smaller on the diameter. Okay, so there's a little bit of a space between the fall yeah. off. Yeah. Your diagonal rod or 340. That's the length of the tie rod from one eye to the other. Okay, so awesome. it's the length of the diagonal. Your height, this will change over time. We'll leave it at six, six, six. Why would it change over time? When you because right now I put the dimension, I just put the random number that is about the right size. When you're going to do the calibration, it's going to calculate the exact print height you can do. Oh, interesting. Very interesting. Okay. Yeah. So the so, other ones need to be accurate with that one, not as much. Yeah, because this one, the probe is going to say, hey, I touched the end. I cannot go further. So there's mm -hmm. five millimeters too much. So th that's the thing. Delta radius. This, this one is tricky to calculate, but I did calculate it. So I'm just going to give it to you. Thanks, I appreciate it. So you see here, get these value from GD33 to calibrate. Get this value from G33 to calibrate. 
same thing here. So those data, once you did calibrate the printer, you can input them in the model. And then if you don't move the printer at all, you don't need to change those. But if you do travel you with your printer, your printer is going to move no matter what, just because okay. of the moving around. So you're going to need to recalibrate every time. So you don't need to fill those because they never right, change. Right, you want it to calibrate each time. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I have to move it around. I don't have enough space to leave it out all the time. Yeah, it's like I don't, I move, I don't I really have... use it that often. It's going to be like I'll use it for like a month out of the year a lot, and then I'll be basically – Probably in storage for 10 months yeah. out of the year. Well, you see, mine is right beside me right now because I was printing on it the other day. But otherwise, I put it back by the wall because like, I don't have, uh, I don't need access to it all the time. Yeah. But when I need it, it's right here. I touch it. Yeah, and exactly. I'm going to calibrate it just because the floor is move, moved enough. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I run the calibration. I probably run the calibration before every print. Well, when I say calibration, I mean the G33. That I move the printer, I run a G33. Okay. If, when when which... I print, I'm going to calibrate the bed, which is not the same thing. Oh, okay. I guess I'm getting the two confused. If, yeah. if when to do the G33 calibration, do I do that through the menu or do I do that through the, through the code? Through the printer, it's gonna, oh, you you're, gonna have a, you're gonna have a menu on your printer. And will the calibration be called G thirty three? Uh, or what will that be on the menu? Well, let me tell you that. It's gonna be called Delta calibration. Okay. And when you go into menu, it's going to be auto calibration. Then you can oh, okay. see, you can see your delta setting and everything. And it, like I put, uh, for for my delta, I put six fifty five for you, but me it's six fifty two point five five. Okay. But that's that's stuff that can change all the time, so. Oh, actually, thinking of that, you still have the original extruder on it, right? Yeah, everything is stock minus the parts that, well, yeah, all the drive mechanical, well, okay, so the only thing I've changed on it are, like, mounts for the power supply, um, the table, and the, um, basically, the prints you sent me. Except, oh, yeah, for, other than except for the... Yeah, I haven't done the cross things yet. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if we get this working, which I look feeling pretty confident, um, then I'm going to go and buy... Well, I'm going to print with it, and if I see any issues, I'll just yeah, keep stiffing things up until... Well, yeah. the, the three X braces are cheap to do. And they're yeah. they're worth it. Yeah, I think well, my my the next thing I want to do. Yeah, I'll probably I'll do those for sure. Um, I don't mind dropping another couple hundred dollars on it, but I definitely want to swap out the um, put a fuse in or swap out the entire power supply. But you think the power supply is good if I just put a fuse to it? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. It's going to be way more safer. But okay. It, it just, you don't need to, when you have the, the switch, you don't need to plug and unplug the printer every time. And let's say. Right. Well, I definitely want to have the switch and I want to have a fuse. Well, uh, there's there there's a fuse on the printer. Uh, oh, there the is. Power yeah, because I opened mine and I changed the fan for a quieter one. There's a fuse in it, but okay. it's, the fuse is fixed. So if the fuse blow, you need to change the board. The, the power supply. Oh, okay, at least there's something though. That's that's yeah. what I was worried about. So what? And it it can change from power supply to power supply. Me, mine. What I did is I removed the fuse on it. So now the only fuse I use is the one that came in the switch. Oh wow! Okay. 
Cause so what one... I was gonna do is just swap it with an old uh, power supply out of a, a desktop that I have. The thing with the desktop power supply is they are twelve volts. They're not twenty four volts. Oh, it needs to be twenty four volts. Okay, well I could just go buy a. Well, if it works, then I don't have an issue. It's I'm just I don't want there to be a house fire. That's, oh that's no, I mean once yeah, you but... do once you do that, because uh, if I remember right, the plug that comes with the printer doesn't have a ground. I'm not sure about that. You're right. It doesn't have a ground. So, so I'll, yeah, I'm gonna swap out one with the ground. Yeah, just just by having the plug I sent you with the power cord I sent you, um, yeah. this this way you're sure you can have a ground to the power supply. Yeah, and it's gonna be fused. And if, like you said, you don't use a printer often, you want to store it, you won't have the cord that tingles in the back of the printer all the time. So you can just remove the cord. Make a bundle out of it, leave it on the bed of printer, store the printer, so you don't have a cord in the in in the way it's less tr troublesome to move it. Like something I don't like with that printer is that power supply is just loose behind the printer. So mine is installed right. on a tower. It's fixed. Yeah, to I the saw tower. the picture. Yeah, I have mine under the bed. It sits under the bed. Did you move all the electronic on top? No, it, I I was able to organize everything underneath the bed. Perfect, that's perfect. Yeah, there's there's some other mounts that you can get on, Thinkiverse to do that. It's, yeah, well, it's just I, I like to have the electronic on top because uh, the screen better like cooling. yeah better cooling. But like the screen of the printer is right here. That's where it worked from the printer, and oh my because. US yeah, yeah, I have mine on the ground on the bottom because I keep it up on a higher table. But if you're staying on well, the ground, it makes yeah, sense. mine it's on the ground, and right here I have USB plug, so I just bought an extension cord because the board is in the, in deep underneath there, so I have an extension cord to put in here, well, a USB extension, and I also have fans on the top here, so there's three fans over each stepper motor that help to cool them down. So when I print, hands over I, your stepper. Oh, your printer looks. I think you have yours configured like upside down. Your stepper yeah. motors are on top. Yeah, everything is on top right here. That's that's the uh, all the top. Oh, interesting. Uh, they're just. I need to clean my office, man. It's <laughs> a freaking mess. Yeah, I think everybody's work studio gets a little bit uh, congested. You know, I was judging somebody the other day, and then I looked around at my stu my studio, and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm just as much as <laughs> you start to realize, oh yeah, you got, you got all these little projects going on, and uh, so to lose track of. You see, I have three stepper, three yeah. fan over the stepper, yeah, and also I yeah. something I had it for the gigs. Oh, that's awesome! So I have a huge ring light installed in it. That's pretty cool. So I just printed a plastic housing. I found a special. I used to work in lighting, and I oh, found cool. I found a special LED strip you can bend. So the lighting go actually the strip points inwards, and I molded it in silicone. So it's all siliconed up. Oh, nice! That's super cool. Yeah. yeah any mod you want to share, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna end up. Uh... Wait. Yeah, I'm recording this. So terrifying. I'm gonna just I'm not gonna do much editing to this. I'm just going to go and throw it on there as like a you know, a help for people that are in my position where there's there's just nothing published to do. I know to there's nothing, but I'm actually working on uh, a file document where all the upgrade I did, all the parts, all the links. Oh cool. All the stuff I did. So all people have to do is do the same thing as I did. Yep. And use the firmware I'm going to post with it. Oh, you are going to post the firmware. Cool. Yeah. yeah. But I, there's almost 200 bucks of upgrade in it. Yeah. I think it's no. worth it because if, if you can use that print volume, it's it's a it's a valuable printer. It is. And I really like it. One of the big thing I changed on it just to help was um, extruder wise. Here, uh, here I have a BMG extruder drive. 
You don't see it, maybe? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, you were showing me that, too. So I'm going to have a... to do that, too, if I'm get going with this thing. Yeah, that's a BMG. I bought well, it like the... 80 bucks or something, right? 70 bucks? I bought it on the AliExpress for $20. Whoa. It does the job. Capricorn yeah, PT. Let me that you... link. Kept, uh, it's Canadian, so well, it's not hard to find oh. on um, AliExpress. There's like yeah. 500 of those Capricorn PTFE tubing right there. What's the difference that, between that PTF tubing and other PTF tubing? This one, the inner diameter is a lot tighter. Ah, okay. So, when I get it. yeah, I understand where you're going with that. So, yeah, when you're film and travel, instead of Adding more room to wiggle around, it's more constricted. So that's why you need a gear the extruder to uh, push it better. Yeah. Okay. So whenever you add this new uh, driver, you the the B B and G or whatever. Um, the B and G. Yeah. Where? Well, we can when we go back to the code. I want to see where you go and change. Yeah, no problem. We can do that. But... Um, yeah, I don't want to make the changes today, but um, yeah, well, yeah, right now I just want to show you how to do it. I want you to right. do it yourself, I want you to learn, right? Right, so now you know how to change stuff, it's, it's easy, right. it's just add slash, remove slashes, and stuff like that, right? But uh, actually, if you give me back control of your print, oh, yeah, that's thing, I forgot, <laughs> <laughs> that's fine, there's not much left to do actually. Oh, good. For the way you're set up right now. Okay. You're you're getting control again. Because right now, we are done with movement. That's fine. Don't need to change much in there. Z probe. That's fine. Uh, so now, right now, we're in the probe section, so it's not. Well, I'm going to check my battery real quick, make sure we're all out. Now we're good. Like let's say tomorrow you want to install a BL touch, you go in the mm -hmm. probe section of the uh, of the Marlin. Mm -hmm. You have BL touch here. Yeah. Now your your printer knows, Marlin knows you have a BL touch. Okay. So, well, right now it's not. The so time all you have to do is delete the slashes and it basically turns it on. Yeah. That's awesome. So, this code that you're running through. Is this the Marlin code, or is this a a version? Is this something that? Oh, Marlin is the is the uh, actual compiler, right? Marlin, yeah, Marlin. Marlin is the firmware. It's the OS of the printer. Okay, gotcha. So we're configuring the printer OS right now. Gotcha. So that's done. And since you run a probe on the Z0, since you probe from the nozzle, not harder than that, because you're on the nozzle, the nozzle to probe offset, that's okay. something you're going to have to change. But you change that via printer face. It's another story. So how will I know how to change that? Um, it's There's going to be a wizard I'm going to also install on the firmware. Okay. You're going to change it with that. Okay. Not... So it'll run through the program and it'll automatically... Okay, cool, cool. It's actually, if you go to printer setting, config, it's probe Z offset. You click on that and you can change it. But if you go in your... Advanced setting, you could have probe offset, and that's where you change it. And in yeah. that menu, there's going to be the Z probe wizard. Okay. Oh, it's not. 
too far hard to do. Um, uh, This line is you need to home the printer before it moves, so it avoids crashing the print head on the bed. Say that again. This line, no motion before homing. It's, okay. You, you won't be able to do any movement. The first thing you have to do is home the printer. Do you recommend that? Yeah. Okay, cool. I was thinking that would be a good thing as well. And this one too. Require rehoming after a stepper deactivated. Because if you lose power to your stepper, even though you think it didn't move the printer, because the delta is gravity working with gravity a lot, yeah. it's gonna move. So your stepper gonna lose step. They won't know where you are at. You better always ohm after deactivating the stepper. Right. Safety reason again. That makes sense. Yeah, you, know, you don't want to crash into your bed. Do you want to say hi, cat? Are you in Canada? Yeah. What part? Uh, I'm in Quebec. Okay. Pretty cold? Not too much. Winter's almost done. You're happy now? Yes. Uh, you don't have a out sensor. Well, bed leveling. Here comes the fun part. All oh, right, the thing we've all been waiting for. So I'm gonna give you bilinear. What's that? I'm gonna give you auto bed leveling bilinear. I think it's the best of both oh, worlds okay. you can get. Gotcha. Treat. Now, why is it so important to preheat before bed leveling? Is that because the, the you're expecting that the things are going to warp a little bit when they heat up? Thermal expansion or right. something on such a big scale because your bed is aluminium your glasses borosilicate everything moves yeah. differently the only thing you don't want to be warm is your nozzle nozzle because yeah. you still use the foam one right so this one we'll leave it at 21. okay Well, actually, mm. that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. We're already done with the bed leveling. It's All right. Hard. It's not hard to add stuff. Uh, what you want, something you want for sure, EEPROM. Because EEPROM is 
in the firmware, you can have stuff you can change and stuff you cannot change. The stuff you can change, it's what we call EEPROM. So that's the printer height, the, the, the tower angle, the trimming, the printer setting for the preheating, the level, the bed leveling and stuff like that. So those, you want to change them with M500, well, you have them here. M500 to store setting to EEPROM, M501 to read setting to EEPROM, and M502 to revert setting to factory default. Okay. Then M503, I don't remember what to do, but you want it. Okay. I just don't remember because I haven't No, used it's okay. You're doing a while. really good job here. I'm going to grab my power cable. I think we're getting a little bit short. I'll be back in just a minute. I'm going to go on another one. Do you plan to use anything other than PLA or ABS? I use PLA and PETG. PETG. Um, the main thing I'll be playing with is lightweight Uh, what are your printing temperature for PLA? Let me grab the um, PLA. Let me grab a spool, or we can pull it up on. Uh, just to pull like it up. Around nine, one ninety, and sixty. No, PLA is like two fifteen to two, something around there. Because you use oh, yeah, PLA should be about 215, maybe 210. Man, you print hot. Yeah, I mean, I use the default settings in uh, in Prusa Slicer. Oh, okay. Well, I'll leave it's just a pre heat, so I'm gonna leave it. Yeah, that's fine. And 60 yeah, that's for fine. the bed. Uh, PG, PG, it's been a while, but they think it's 230. Yeah, it's right around there. Sounds about 70. right. Right, that looks great. Yeah, the bed is definitely 60. That's the one that takes the most time anyways. PID will change that. Yeah. That's fine. We don't need to change anything there. Yeah, th these, this bed heats up really fast, I noticed as well. Yeah. yeah it heats it up way faster than my mini. Um, now we're getting to the board. Oh, yeah. Two, three, six, four, six. Engine timer at the start. Good. LCD. Is there a language you'd like to have uttered in English? If you're no, something else, absolutely no. not. All right. <laughs> well, we don't know. You could speak Spanish more than English. I do speak Spanish, but not better than English. Uh, my French is better than my English, but <laughs> oh, really? English. Yeah. Hmm. Everything is in English, so. Well, uh... Mm. 
reverse encoder direction. What's that for? Uh, it's the size, the the way you turn the knob. So if you turn oh, it okay. right, it should go up. Oh, cool. Uh, is it that? Perfect. Uh, if, you turn, if you turn it right, it should go down. Right, 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 right. But if I'm not wrong, on the HE3D, when you turn it right, it goes up, which... It's, yeah, it's, it does feel backwards. I was playing with it before this call. It's not intuitive. Not at all. That's fine. The prep discount smart controller. And that should be the only thing enable. Do you have a YouTube channel or anything? No, I don't. Okay. I don't have the time to do for that. Yeah, I have a YouTube channel, but it's it's really just uh, for my business. I don't have anything of this sort on it, but I think I'm going to add this video to it anyways. Oh. Just... Uh, yeah, just I think it might help somebody out. So, so remember I said at the configuration advanced, you won't go there often? Mm hmm Now is one of those times. Okay. Uh... Why are you compiling? Compiling right now? Yeah, it started to compile on my PC. I don't know why. Oh, on your PC. Define prove us at wizard. Okay, that's good. Should be good. Now, oh yeah, true. So once you program your firmware, mm -hmm. you need to go to tools, board, and we are running an Arduino Mega 2560. Okay. That's this. That's that thing right here. That's the 2560. Oh, okay. That's the computer chip. The yeah, the, 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 this chip is the brain of the machine. Yeah. So now the board knows that. The compiler knows that. Because uh, Arduino is just a compiler. Okay. It doesn't know nothing. It's, it knows stuff because there's script, because you tell him stuff, right. stuff like that. Otherwise, it knows nothing. So when you compile, it's going to give you error according to those scripts. And okay. All you can do is look for the command, the, the error online on Google, or you can just look it up. It's going to often say what's the error. Now, now more than ever, when it was more than 1.1, it was a pain in the ass. Okay. But I doubt you're going to have error. I could okay. be wrong. I could be wrong. Well, I'm hoping we can run it by the end of the night. Or by the end of this call. I hope. I hope for you. Me too. <laughs> uh so you're compiling on my computer right now, that's correct? Yep. Well, I'm verifying. Okay. There's also something you should go get yourself. 
What's that? It's what do we call a USB ISP? Okay. It's just a ribbon cable with two little boards. Okay, and what's that? So do? that's what we call a programmer. So this one goes on your PC since it's just a USB cable. And this one, if you look, there's oh you won't see it because my yeah, you know, my webcam is garbage. But here yeah. there's like pinouts written on each side uh -huh. of the connector, the six pins connector. Okay. And on your board, beside that connector, there's the pin out there. So all you need to do is merge them. So once you plug your USB ASP like that in the board, mm -hmm. then you connect that to your PC, you can program it with Marlin using that thing. So I need that cable to program it. No, you don't need it. Oh, okay. But what happened if if you brick your board, the USB won't be enough to fix it. Mm. You're going to need the USB ASP to fix it. That's what happened with my uh, other big one. I, I bricked the board and I had to... Uh, Burn a bootloader, that they call. Okay. The bootloader is like the BIOS of a PC, if you will. Gotcha. It's still, I think it's still running. I can hear the fans going. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. Auto bed leveling require either probe manually, sensorless probe, or real probe. No, it's not too bad. So now we know it's in the bed leveling. So we can go back to this section, bed leveling. So I found an error, basically. Well, it says the error. Uh, compilation oh. error. Auto bed leveling requires either probe manually, sensorless probing, or real probe. Gotcha. So that's not too hard to fix. Does, does it say only... what line of code that is, or you just have to scroll? Just scroll. Okay. Well, you can, you could control F, uh, bed leveling. Oh, okay, cool. And then you can cycle. There you go. Oh, that's better, yeah. Thing hey, it's gonna be in the probe section, I believe. Probe. It is in Z homing. Uh that's EL touch. There we go. Yeah, that's it. I think that's the problem. Just let me check. Well, nozzle probe. Just want to make sure I put the right thing in the right place. Sure, sure. Because I'm I'm used to I'm used to the be all touch. I'm not used to the foam thing. Gotcha.
Like, I, I would send you the BL Touch I have, but you won't have the cable that goes with it, and I'm pretty sure you don't have the wiring harness for Oh, I got you. I have to switch boards to use the BL Touch. Unless. Yeah. This, the, the, this BL Touch... That's a buzz. The BL touch I showed you earlier is actually a fake BL touch. Mm. That's that's not a real BL touch. The real real BL touch are like almost sixty bucks. Mm -hmm. So what I did recently, because I thought my BL touch, my cheap one was bad, so I bought a Creality kit one. Mm. But I already had uh, the wiring RNS installed, so I still have the wiring for the Creality one. But you don't use those connector on any other thing than a BL, uh, Creality board. Mm. But what you need, you, it's that connector. Because this one goes right here. A bit tight. There you go. Okay. So that's the only wiring you need, but like you have three warriors you need to put somewhere. Because there's the black and the white. Those are power, if I'm not wrong. And the other three are what controls the probe going up and down. And what detects when the probe is activated. Mm, yeah. So like, I would set it to you, but it's not the good wiring oh. so for what you need. Yeah, I hear you. But they're cheap. Yeah, I mean, it's probably cheaper for me to buy one than for you to send it anyways. And also, when you buy a real BL Touch, they come with the needle. So that that's the needle. Mm, okay. And at the hand of the needle, there's a a magnet. Mm. So that's how it knows when it's activated because there it's basically an electromagnet that thing. Okay. Yeah, I might have to do that. Yeah, I would suggest it. If I would say any upgrade you need, that would be the upgrade. I can look for you if you want online for a BL touch kit that is not too expensive. Yeah, I'd be interested to see that looks like because the one I bought was really cheap because it's the Creality one, but it came with a bracket that we don't need. Gotcha. All right. I'm going to need control to your PC again. Oh, yep. Sorry. No problem. All right. That should be it. Okay. I think. But also, usually the better the PC, the better the, the faster the compiling. Yeah. But you have a decent machine, so it should not take too long. It's always the compiling that takes forever. Actually transferring the, the program to... The printer is not that long. It's compiling that takes forever. But when when you compile the way you do it now, so when you have a compiled file for the first time and you want to transfer it, it's going to be a way quicker to try to recompile it the second time because it's already did it once. Interesting. Because right now it's reading the whole thing and removing the chunks it doesn't need. Mm. So later when you recompile it to transfer it, it doesn't read the chunk you don't need because it knows it doesn't need it. So they're not there. 
Yeah, let me kick up to the computer to full speed. I don't know if that actually makes a difference. It maybe goes five or ten percent faster. But we can bump it up the, the speed here, the performance. Should help. It's a little hotter, but it's okay. But the the bar here at the bottom was never accurate when it came time to compile stuff. Oh, okay, it's pushing the thing a little bit. The thing with Merlin, well, with the Arduino, it's not using; it's only using one core. Yeah, I think um, I think Fusion does the same thing. Fusion 360, SolidWorks, Solid Edge, they all use one core. Because I found it annoying. I have a, it's a Ryzen 9 3900X I run. Mm -hmm. and it's going to use like one or two core to run SolidWorks. Yeah, this runs, this is, yeah, it's, it's eight cores and I'm pretty sure I'm only using one. Yeah, uh, for sure. Because uh, otherwise, it, using eight, co eight cores, you would be loaded to 100%. Right, exactly. And it would be done. Yeah. But they do that to... Um, Free up the rest of the machine, basically. Yeah, to avoid overstressing it. Oh, they did intentionally. It was just a uh, lack of utilization. But there's not only that, but like, let's say you run it at the same time, you can go and you can actually uh, do Google other or, stuff. You yeah. can launch another program. So you could have Excel calculating something on one core. You right. could have then, uh, Fusion 360 calculating something else on the other core and another core running something else. Oh, we have an error. I'm not controlling why. I think you have to give me access. Oh, okay. You got access. Zeman and stop inverting to my Zeman stop inverting. So here it's get quite easy because you can just select the error itself. Mm. Paste it here. That. Okay. Come on. There you go. No, oh, cool. So you, you just need to work the kinks and uh, the fail in the compiler right. until it's compiled and working. Yeah, gotcha. yeah. But it's always going to tell you what the problems are. And then after that, that's the part that I don't like not doing at distance, is actually programming in the printer and then running the firmware for the first time. Because you're going to see stuff I won't be able to see. Mm. But let's say you move, you want to level the bed and you send the printer, you own the printer. And if all the axes move upwards, you know you don't need to invert anything. But if all the axes move downwards, then you know you have to go to your movement settings and set either on true or false to reverse the axis. Oh, okay. But I don't think it should do it because we started with the Delta config and mine didn't do it when I I started because I did the same thing as I did with you. I went with the generic Delta config, so it fix, fixes a lot of problems. So how do I get the... Uh, how do I, I guess... Upload the software or the firmware to the printer. You got a USB cable? Yes, yeah, so I can use the USB cable that I came with. Perfect. Yep. I was so, hoping that was going to be enough. When you do that, you plug it. Then you go on 
port. Mm. Right now you see you have port four and three that are used. Mm -hmm. So let's say you plug it and then you go back on port. Com one is now online. You select com one. It's your port that is. Oh, okay, so you'll see another port come on, and that's the one you want to use. Yeah, because one of them must be uh, the mouse. If you're using a mouse right now, the other one could be another. another oh one. yeah, I'm using a mouse, and well, that's the only thing I know. So is there anything else in the back? Yeah, it's just a mouse at the moment. Well, there's. There's an other port used somewhere for something else. Hmm. It could be an internal port too. So it's a laptop. Yeah. It's different than a PC. Yeah, it's true. Hmm. But let's say you're going to use a programmer like I have the USB ASP. Instead of going to port, you go to programmer. Hmm. Oh. We're going to work it out. All right. Um. That's weird. So it should have just be negative one? Yeah, but it should have since it's uh uh let me check. Um bro find next Okay. One puzzle to height. Is he home?
Yes, sir. Ten forty. Okay. Let me check. Could be on my side also have an error, I don't remember. Oh, yeah. Reference. Now we're going to have more info. What would you do this time? I activated the verbros, so I'm going to see where uh, is the problem better now. Okay. So what, even if we feel like nothing is going on when compiling, we can see that it's actually compiling for real. Okay. Because right now I don't seem to be able to find... What a problem is with probing. Right. Probe terror. Probe. Oh. Use probe. Oh, okay. I found it. Did you just turn that off? Yeah, I should fix it. 
Okay. You don't have to restart the compiler. It yeah. just will update in real time. No, we have to wait for it to stop. No, no, oh, I go, got you. Go away. So you can't stop it mid. No, that's something I kind of hate about it. Because uh, there's another program you can use to compile, but it's a bit more finicky. Yeah. Well, this is as far as I've gone with the programming. Like, I've programmed a switch to turn on and off with an Arduino, and just, like change the light colors, and like just I took a class in college, but other than that, like I don't really know what what the heck I'm yeah. doing. Actually, yeah. I don't know thing I can even do. Like, well, I get the, I understand the programming logic. Like, I understand the logic behind programming. So it, it's just, kind uh, of easy with with the uh, Arduino and Marlin yeah. like that, because you do something. There's an error. You just need to find where the error is. Once right. that's fixed, you move forward. Right. It's, the other one, it's more complicated because. It doesn't really give you the the where the error is, but it's more just click a box to select what you want. Luna, go away. So it's more just you click and you select where you want to go and what you want to add or remove or whatever. So I find it easier and it's also faster to compile. But you cannot use a USB. Uh, yes, you can use a USB ASP. You cannot use a burner bootloader though. They're, you're more limited. This one is more like driving a car manual, and the other one is automatic. Oh, nice. But to get there, you need to install a program, then you, you need to install Visual Studio, then platform.io, then marlin.io. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I would not. I don't think I would have ever figured this out if you weren't here. I would have been like oh, looking at this that, for months. There's plenty of tutorial online. It's yeah. just that printer for starters, the, the HE3D, it's such a pain in the ass when you're a beginner and you don't know what to do with it. It's just a pain. Yeah, I mean, I've been using printers for, I don't know, six, seven years now, something like that. Yeah. So I don't consider myself a beginner, but I'm not a coder either, you know? Like, yeah. there's well, a big difference between being comfortable with using 3d printers and being able to create your own firmware <laughs> for your 3d you know, printer let's say you would have started with the creality printer they are a good printer out of the box yeah, yeah do you, you like the creality does not like getting one of those for a, a simpler large larger printer yeah so let's say you start with a creality one of my friends started with one mm -hmm. and he goes, hey, I want to have a bed leveling on it. I'm like, well, install a BL Touch. He's like, what do I do? I'm like, man, YouTube, you can have video that's going to explain everything from installing the software all the way to uploading on the printer and then testing it on the printer. And now he's better at me at coding Marlin. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Because you, you start with no kind of stuff. Yeah. No knowledge about it. No and context. Just context. Yeah. You build over time. And as for you, I think you said you had the Prusa Mini printer. Yeah, I have the Prusa Mini. And years ago, I started with a uh, Ta Tivo, Ta Tavo, Tivo, Torno, Tor Tor Tornado, Tivo, something like that. Tivo, okay. Tivo Tornado. And it's basically the uh, in uh, Endo. It's basically an Endo. Okay. But my friend, me and my friend went in on it together when we were in college, and he's a he's a, a electrical engineer. He he's really intelligent. He can program and everything. So yeah. he set everything up. I never by the time I got to the house, everything was already running. So I don't oh, okay. actually know what the setup went, but um, we use it to, for doing like larger prints and stuff. Then I wanted to be able to print. Um, just it was kind of a pain in the ass because I had to go to his house when he was around to print. So I ended up just giving him that printer and um getting the mini. I saw, I started traveling anyways. He put a lot of he did a lot of upgrades to it and stuff. So yeah. I, so if you would have done that uh, by but, yourself, yeah, 
tackling the K280 would not have been as much of a problem. Yeah. Well, or not hardware, but like uh, all software-based stuff. Because yeah. then you would start with a working printer and upgraded it over time. So that's why when people are like, yeah. hey, should I get the cheapest printer I can get on the market? I'm like, honestly, no, get that. It's maybe 400, 500 bucks. But you can easily upgrade it as you go along. Right. And, and you're going to learn better. And like, it's a popular printer. So there's a lot of people on the market who runs right, it. Right, yeah. This hunk of chunk of garbage <laughs> is not a popular printer at all. So it shouldn't it's really, be, yeah. It, it's really hard to have uh, yeah. video made out. Support. Yeah. But if you take an Ender 3 V1 Pro, man, mm -hmm. that printer, is, there's so many tutorials on YouTube. It's crazy. Yeah. And good news. We have no more error on the screen. All right. Look at that. Yeah. So plug that up and uh, we'll upload it. Okay, so I'm gonna plug my printer into into the computer now. Yeah. Yeah, and no need to turn the power on on the printer. Okay, because it'll power from the laptop. Yeah, the 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 five volt from the USB is gonna be enough to power it. Okay, cool. The only thing that's really interesting about this laptop is the 300 watt power brick, which is bigger than like some. Desktop power supply. It's insanely big. 300 watts. Yeah. It was one of the factors why I bought it, but also I didn't realize how big it was physically. <laughs> My good. Uh, yeah, it was. That was why I liked this laptop because it has one of the biggest power supply. Oh. Okay, so right now my bed is. Okay. Okay. So the lights have come on on the printer. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and well, I want to show you what the printer is doing. Oh, yeah, so, good idea. Um, the only problem is I don't think the port is on. In the meantime, I'm going to go get printer face. Okay. What's that? Counter face? Yeah. What is that? It's the program used to uh, run the printer from the PC. Oh, you know what I can do if I plug it into the side? I think so I want to turn this around. So. Basically, I'm going to count you to run the computer because I'm going to be... You know, I can move this wire so it's a little bit here. Oops. Let's see if I Yeah, sure. I on the table. Oh, 
So we can figure this, and I think I know the answer, but I'm going to change the bed. I'm going to change the bed here to those other mounts. And oh, family photos. This thing is. I gotta. I'm gonna take over for a second. Oh, okay, just give me one second. You can just want to make sure I don't load the right thing. Okay, do your thing first. You're not going to be able to see what the screen says, but I will. I'll just uh, have to read out to you. The, the, just the way I have to move the actual. Um, I have to actually remove the board in order to. Be able to configure where you can see the screen. Where... So is that cord um, enough to actually run the whole printer? Huh? Or just like it, could I actually print just using the USB? Beast cord? No, no, no. Uh, to upload the firmware, yes, you can just go with that. Oh, it's I got plugged. you. It's plugged now? Yes, yeah, plugged in. And I'm going to turn off my... Um, Comma 6. There we go. Once, yeah, I'll turn off my backdrop so you can actually see... Is it, is uh, it yeah. or is it going to be stationary? The printer? It's fine yeah. where it is. Uh, no because again, are you, are you gonna like calibrate everything, or like give me to run anything? I guess. Or I'm. Wanna... I'm gonna make sure the movements are right. Okay, perfect. So yeah, I'll turn on the. Uh, I'll, I'll turn off the. Uh, my backdrop, so you can actually see the printer move. Yep. And then I'll communicate with you if. Uh... So right now it's recompiling. What okay. we already compiled. Like I said, it's faster now. Yeah, okay, so let me go ahead and, oh, I just go to my video settings here. Nope. Done compiling. Loading. Real quick, give me one second. Okay, so this is the printer here. All right. Where's the print head? Oh, oh, okay, perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead. Okay, you still got control of everything, and everything is running nice and smooth. Uh, we we homed it before this, so you know auto home out perfect. Um, the only thing is this one belt is sticking up, and it's getting kind of canceled. Let's move that way. Okay, so you should be good to run. Um, or anything you need to run. Let's do that. And then if you need to, okay. So right now, if you're in version error, Did you hear me? Uh, I hear you, yeah. It just says uh, EPROM -E version error 
initialize each Oh, that, that's fine. That's fine. Go ahead, ignore or reset. I'm rewriting it. Okay, so just leave it alone. Because I didn't see the verb rows for the upload. The red text, there we go. It's done. It's on the printer. What oh, does it is it on the printer already. What does it say on the screen now? It says the same thing. Say, uh. Do you have an option? Uh, take the other option, not the ignore one. Reset. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, now it looks like um looks normal. Got the normal. The Perfect. Perfect. Can yeah, now you can plug it in. Okay. Leave the USB connected. But okay. that thing, don't 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 get the electrical shock. Now, do you want me to uh, run the? Do you want me to do uh, what you call? You may run the home. I need to be able to one shot. Uh, that's for Python. Sure, didn't download the right thing. It goes well when you don't download the right thing. I don't know how to use Python. No, I don't know Python. I think it's this one. Ah. Uh, we got the uh, sensor on here too. Whenever we can, we do a file transfer. Are you asking me? Yeah, can we can I send you a file? Oh, you can send me a file, sure. You wanna email it to me? Uh, I feel like it's gonna be easier to do that. Okay. Um, yeah, I know like whatever you tell me, I'll believe. <laughs> like log into your bank account to do this next step. <laughs> <laughs> With your bank account, credit card, uh, social security number, need all of that, man. It's important. Okay, where do I enter? <laughs> there you go. Because I'm just going to compile my printer face because mine is an executable. It's an app. It's not like, installed. Okay. I don't need to do fucking gibberish with it. Don't remember where I took it. That's the thing. So are we talk are you using the software that you for the the malware or not the malware? The Marlin? Your Marlin software, is that what you're trying to upload or something else? No, printer face. Printer face is an interface to control the printer from your PC. Oh, there was another software I was using. I don't remember the name of it. Probably something garbage. <laughs> oh, it's definitely something garbage. Printer faces, it, it's the thing you want to use. Okay. Yeah, I went through another tutorial. Somebody made it. Um, it's actually kind of prompted me to make, make this tutorial because all I did was like videotape themselves playing together over three hours. No, it took them 
maybe six hours. I went through that tutorial to put this together. Yeah. Uh, I said it was it not you. very good, but you know what? I give them props because it was the it was the best tutorial that I saw. And um, so like right now, something I think putting something out there is better than having nothing out there. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I send you in the chat box the product of the zip file. Okay. I don't have okay. access to that. Yeah, yeah, let me let me see here. Uh, open it now. I didn't know you could send files. Downloading it. Okay, can you see this menu now? This or I'm gonna save it to the desktop actually. Is, is home the same as desktop? No, desktop is the same as desktop. So save it there. Okay, now it's on a desktop. You should be able to see it. Yep. Okay. When did you say open with or open? When did you compress it? Oh, then you need to open. Don't you need to open the file and then just pull the folders out? Well, I compressed it with. I think that's the easiest way to do it with the Windows 11. Is sir, let me see something real quick. Yeah. Oh, wait. show more options. Is it a full? It's not a folder. Not only if it's a zip folder, you can just open the folder and then drag the. I found a seven zip, but. Uh... <clears throat> yeah, I should have sent us a seven zip. Uh, compress, compress. Mm. Open. Are you sending me another file? Is that what you're about to do? Okay. I'm compressing it. There we go. That should work. Instead of sending a 7 zip. Oh, this one. Garbage. Cannot wait to see that thing running. Yeah, I've. Rarely ever put this much effort, if ever, into troubleshooting something. Probably never in my entire life ever put this much effort into troubleshooting something. Well, at least the good thing is you don't have that much troubleshooting to do because I already did it on my side with mine. So yeah. I, know, I know what works and doesn't work. Yeah. It's a lot of safe time for you. Yeah, I pretty much given up on troubleshooting this myself. I was like, okay, I gotta get on one of these forms and find someone who like is willing to let me or willing to help me. This is uh going over my but like for the rest, when you want to install, let's say BL Touch. Yeah, all you have to do is open Marlin, go to the probe setting, uh remove what I did Showed for me. the probe, yeah. set the BL touch one, and then just enter your offset, and that's it. Everything yeah. How else do you know the already... offset? How do I know the offset? Well, uh, let's say I take my part here. Yeah. So that's where my nozzle is, where my finger is. So all I'm gonna oh, do. Oh, I see. You measure from where it's the the, the yeah, sensor. So, so my uh, my my BL touch is gonna be installed. Right. I get what you're right, saying. Right here. So all I need to do, actually. Right here, and all I need to do is measure from the point here to mm -hmm. the center there. But since it's in line in that axis, I know it's zero. So the printer is gonna, the head's gonna sit like that on the printer. So on the X, it's gonna be zero. On the Z, it's gonna be like 25 millimeter. And on the Z, you just enter in millimeters. You don't, you wouldn't put the unit, you just put 25 for 25. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Marlon is all millimeter. Yeah. Uh, you should have received the file. Okay, I got it. Uh, 
Okay, so you're already on desktop, so okay, so it's the oh I don't oh, I see okay. Oh no. No. Uh Just to cancel. Oh, whoops. Okay. There we go. Oh, you can see my screen. Okay, you can see that part of it. Oh, I'm not sure if you could see. Save. Okay, cool. Can you open it now? Uh, okay. Just out of curiosity, why not just use the the print? Um, why not just use the the, the printer to do the commands? You need to use another software. Well, because there's some commands it's better to do with the printer face. Okay, but just... it would be possible to do without that, or no? Yeah, yeah, I just want to show you okay. how to use it with it. No, that's it, good. I'm just curious, just uh, in case anyone else has questions. Uh, it, it's a wonderful tool. Oh, here we go. That looks interesting. We have it. Like back in the days, to actually slice a part, you would need that thing to send the G code to the printer. Yeah, I mean, I started with uh, Simplify 3D, and it was something kind of like that where you'd, you'd run it, you'd, the computer was always connected to the printer, and you could. I feel like it was something similar to how this works. I don't know. So uh, a bit the same thing as uh, Marlon uh, as Arduino. You need to select okay. COM. So COM6 didn't change. Okay. Code rate is 25,000 because that's what we entered. Okay. Connect. Connecting. Printer is now online. I want to see the moment of truth here. So Remember when I said I disable the control of the printer, you cannot move the printer without uh, ohming it first. So yes. say you want to move it one side, oh, ohm first. It says okay. here, ohm first. Yeah. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, get ready to pull the plug just in case. OK. Let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. I got it in my hand. OK, it should go up. Okay. All right. It was fast. There we go. That's that. Oh, so whenever it did that initial hit and then it hit everything again, it was actually initializing which water is which. Like that's where it was like configuring all the yeah. movement. Oh, yeah. that is so, the thing I was asking about. So now the printer is uh, set up. That's perfect. And now. Why can't I click there? Come on. Uh, you remember what I said of Marlon? You have a... Uh, uh, this one. This one don't need it. There you go. G33 Delta Auto Calibration. So... You remember when I said you could do, you could have option of stuff you could do. So what we're gonna do is run the auto calibration of Marlin. Right. Okay. But first thing first, we want to see what kind of info you have on the board. Okay. You can. Can we close that? Let me close that. Close this real quick. I don't know if that's in your way. Okay. Ah, perfect. So if you enter M501, uh, okay, M5. Oh, this is where you enter those commands. Okay. M501. Why doesn't it show it? I think, here, hold on, let me move something else. There's silly little pop ups that like to happen with the. Uh... Hold on, let me, let me drive for a second. Yeah. 
Maybe this is in the way. Is that it? Send? No, no, it's on. It says uh, setting star to retrieve, but it doesn't show it to me. Well, do I need the send button to send it to the printer? Yeah, I need that, but uh, that's fine for now. Okay. I just need control back option. Oh. What that is that? This is the old table I have. So if I think we're gonna use the same table and then these mounts, so it will not be able to move. So once it's calibrated in place, because you have the software calibration, it's all calibrating the nozzle and not the actual board. So right now, because we can't calibrate the software, I put this board on so we can use the knobs and, and adjust it. But that's a pain. I mean, we, yeah, it's a it's a really terrible way to actually do something like this. Sorry about that. I'm gonna send the printer calibration. Hey, I have so, a question. Yeah. Uh, this is totally off topic, but with using these mounts, do you just put the glass bit on there, or do you put the glass bit on top of the metal bit? Oh, I guess you have to put the glass top in the middle. No, yeah, because that's what heats up. Well, uh, oh, you don't, you didn't screw it in place. Well, it's, what do you mean? <laughs> There's a hole on the side of it. There's two holes on each side of the bracket. You need to install the M4 screw with T-nuts. Yeah, so this, I haven't made this install yet. Um, oh, okay, it's the only thing. Yeah, it's not installed. Install I have three of them, but. I'm still using the, I wanted to get the software running before I swapped over because right now I can still print on it. And with, with once I install this, I need the software. So I want to get the software and then I'll do the um, that upgrade. Gotcha. But I have, I bought a glass bed for it or a glass, you know, 12 inch glass mirror. But you put the, the glass mirror on top of the bed and then you leave the thermostat underneath in the same place. So you, there's really nothing that. So I guess you just don't lose enough heat through the glass that matters. Yeah. Well, uh, something I would suggest you to do is buy cork sheet, uh, one eighth of an inch thick. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's one eighth of an inch, and install it under the bed. Use a double sided tape. Well, it's really thin double sided tape. It's almost like a fabric double sided tape. You okay. use that to stick the cork underneath the bed, and it's going to help uh, warm the bed faster. Oh, like insulated, basically. Yeah, so one side is insulated, and since all your electronic is in the bottom of that part, right. it's going to help them keep cool, cool. That's smart. Yeah, I can do that. That makes sense. Uh, I mean, you go to the dollar store. They usually come in sheet of four, so then you can just go and put cork sheets under every other printer you have. That's true. That's what I did. I have one cork left for the bigger one, but since I'm converting it to a CNC, it doesn't matter. But like I have a CPAP yeah. machine for sleeping, and I yeah. got one sheet of cork to put under the CPAP to stop the vibration. Gotcha. It's a good dampening, but it's also good for insulating. Um, can you install the probe on the nozzle? Yep. Give me one second. All right, the probe is installed. Um, yeah, that thing's fast. Ooh, it's, it's going like, I feel like it's, it's hitting pretty hard. Yeah, we could slow down the speed. I don't know if you can again. see that, but it's like, I probably want to turn that down. Yeah, we could slow it down. But hey, man, it's going like a champ. Yeah. Look at that thing go. 
Yeah. <laughs> Man. I just worry it's going to break something. So it's going to do it a few times. So you see your standard deviation right now is 30.8 millimeter deviation. Look at how fast it is. And now your deviation is going to go lower because every time it goes and probe the bed like that, it's going to cal calculate wrote, everything. Uh, 2,000 lines. Well, you filled out 2,000. like 2,000 lines of code we went through. You create a new. But okay. I mean, this speed is not bad. It's actually it quite good speed. Yeah, it's kind of on right now. Ooh. Damn. Look at that. You went from a We're deviation of. You, you see your deviation, you went from 30.8 all the way down to 0. 0. 0.692. Okay. So it's so, often sitting on springs right now. Yeah, it doesn't help. When it's going to be hard mounted, it's going to be... Yeah. But it's, it's doing its job. <laughs> it's amazing. We'll I think... keep going around until it drops the deviation to a certain amount. So I actually don't even know if uh yeah it's pretty firm. Yeah, I was that's the uh driver for the uh material. Mm -hmm. That's what pushes the material through. And I'm pretty happy with how it's going so far. So of what I'm seeing right now, you have a working printer. Awesome. All you're going to be left to do is your PID temp. Can we? Oh, so, okay. I have some profiles set up for. Uh, I have some profiles set up for this printer in Prusa. Yeah. Would I have to adjust the slicer at all? Nope. You shouldn't have to change the slicer. Okay. The slicer is just the language you send to the printer to decode the right, part. I'm not sure if I'm going to change any of the parameters that the uh, slicer has on it. So I want and to your, 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 this. your deviation is better than mine. Oh, really? <laughs> I, I wonder if that has anything with the fact that I tightened the heck out of these, uh, these, uh, what you might call it? Belts? The bands. The, could be, but yeah. your deviation is Not really good right now. Tight, but maybe when you tighter, well, they would start the teeth would start to slip between the. Uh, I couldn't even lock it together. So. Oh, they were slipping. Well, like if you pull up, if I tighten it too much, then you know how the teeth interlock when you wrap it around. Yeah, it? yeah, yeah, yeah. It would yeah, actually yeah. start to let go. So that was just how tight I made it. Yeah, that that stuff happens. But right now it's looking really good. Cool. I like what I see. If you're happy with it, I'm happy. So you don't think it's a problem that it's hitting that hard. You know, before it was like super slow, you know. Do, 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 do. No, <laughs> it's not a problem because it's literally a switch. It's two tin foil of aluminum with the bubble yeah. in the middle. As soon as they I... touch this stuff. Okay. I'm just happy with what I'm seeing right now. I'm happy with what I'm seeing too. This is like a month in the making here. Well, really, it's a couple of weeks, but uh, I was working my ass off on the thing trying to figure it out. It does help when you know what you're doing. That's a uh, that's a big fact. So what when are we, you when when you, you go you automatically stop, or are you gonna eventually stop it? What's going on? Yeah, when you go and you know nothing, or you your base, or when you're when you don't have the knowledge, it's hard to go and try. Yeah. And, but once you know what you're doing, it's a lot easier world to to play with. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So how how do we know when? Um... When what? How, how when is this thing going to be finished with the calibration? Uh, it's on the ninth cycle. Should stop after that one. Oh, okay, okay. I wasn't sure if it was going to keep going forever or. No, uh, it's gonna, it's gonna do finish that cycle. It's gonna do another one, and it should be done afterwards. Okay, I'm gonna try to adjust the camera here. See so a little bit of. Well, right now it's good. I see what I need. I know everything upstairs is going fine. There we go. It's done. 
Awesome, awesome. Just wanna, does that help you out at all if you're a little further away? Well, that's fine. So you see it right now, it's done. Uh -huh. Once that is done, you do uh, M500 and it's going to save everything to the printer. Oh, cool. And if we do M503, no, M501. Yeah, it doesn't show it though. Why doesn't it show it? Anyway, that's fine. Now we can do a PID uh, bed temp. That's something we can do together right now. It doesn't take too long. You can remove the um, probe. The probe. Yep. Okay. What's the M503? Does. Report setting. Oh, I could. Uh, oh, it doesn't matter now. I have a little dongle to add on to make this USB longer. Okay, there we go. Yeah, and so it's, it's the, the only message on the uh, LCD screen says setting storage. So. Yeah, because I did an M500. Okay, so just to clarify, whenever I um, whenever I run this, or once I put the new bed on, I'm going to rerun this we just did? Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah. You go in printer face, you connect the printer, G33, that's it. So right I, now, you don't... Hit, you, uh, what's the... Oh, G33? Is that what I put in there? Uh, G33. G33. G33, okay. Uh, you just type G33, send. Okay. Uh, Perfect. You don't have a glass bed, eh? I do. I just... I haven't put it on. Okay. That's fine for now. I can go grab it right now, actually. No, no, it. it's fine. We're going to run a term, Mr. PID, right now. Okay. So, uh, the term, the PID, when it's done for the build, the head, the, 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 the print head, uh, you don't need to redo it. If you change okay. something, unless you change the head now, you, then you have to redo okay. it. Okay. So don't touch the nozzle, it's going to get hot. Okay, sounds good. If you look on printer face here, you have a graph. That oh, graph cool. shows you your temp. So EX0, it's your hot end. So you see how it goes in step? Yeah. That, that's your PID. It's overshooting or undershooting. It, it it goes in waves because it doesn't know the profile. What it's done, usually it should make a nice, nice curve. Oh, cool. So you want to run it at the temperature you're going to run the printer usually. Gotcha. That's awesome. And then after you have the Z bed level, uh, the Z probe offset, that um, the Z bed offset and the extruder calibration, I will let you do it. Okay. There's plenty of guys on YouTube to do those things. When you know how to do it, it's easy. Yeah. Okay, wait. So the Z bed offset, wouldn't I just do that when with the with the screen? You can do it with you can do it with the screen. Okay. If you go if you go well not now, we'll wait for the PID to be done. Okay. But when you do do it with the screen, you have the same control. It's the same thing. It's just I like to do it with printer face. Well, I got you. with this printer, I'll, with my Delta, I'll do it with the Delta, but uh -huh. with the the big one in the back, I'll do it with printer face because I can just plot the printer beside me and do it okay. on the table. It's easier. This one, I do it on the side. So you see now your temperature are oscillating in wave. It's it's uh -huh. overshooting and undershooting. That's what PID does. Gotcha. And eventually it'll be nice and smooth, and then yeah, you know. it's gonna be a nice straight line. Oh, okay, it'll get to a straight line. I gotcha. Interesting.
then after when the PID is done, you run. Oh yeah, just two of eight. I got you. Oh cool, I can see right here. When the PID is done, after you run a M three o four. It's simple. M three o four D I P. But to do that, you're gonna have the info right here. So the PID is done. Okay. We have the info we need here. So M three o four. P twenty eight point five four space I two point nine five space D sixty four point two nine. It's sent to That's... the printer. Okay. M five hundred. It's now saved on the printer. And okay, the the thing that we just sent over there, that was a calibration we did. Yeah, we just calibrated the the. the... Where did you actually oh. pull those numbers from? Uh, when you send, let's see here, I send the M303 command. Right. Then it says PID to tune start. Uh huh. It's still, oh, it's not done. Oh, it's not done yet. Uh, now it's giving me value for every, yeah, I didn't finish it. Whoops, I did it too fast. Every time it's going to, finish a cycle it's going to give you value here oh, okay. but when it's going to be over the text will be different i just i went too fast yeah we're on cycle seven of eight but yeah it's getting pretty stable and you see for the bed it's going to be the same tree or tree command but instead of sending yeah, I sent this one, the M three O three E zero zero extruder. You're gonna send E minus one cycle eight S sixty. Mm -hmm. But that I'll let you do it once you have your glass on your bed. Well, let me go grab that real quick. I have it right here. All right, you can print. You can press on the. On the knob. Oh, nice. Right, uh, press on the knob. What is that? Press on the knob. Oh. Thank you. So right. you see here, it's finished. It gives you the fine default. So you could do, take that here and go copy it and paste it in uh, Arduino. Those line here. Hold on one second. Let me move this out. Let's see. Okay. You could go copy those line in uh, in Marlin, but it's it's not worth it for what it takes to do it. So okay. once you have those three lines, M three hundred four, you take your key P, key E, and key D. So you just type P twenty three point four, I two point thirty eight, D fifty seven point fifty. That's done. Send M five hundred. Oh, wait. So M five hundred saves it. Yeah, uh, forget it. So you're gonna type it in there. Okay. Why on my own command? Three four P twenty three point four I two point three eight D 
Come on. Why? Uh, give me a sec. Take your time. All right, the dev is installed. Oh. Turns out it's M301. There you go, M500. So now I'm 303. Your glass is on the bed? Yep. All right. So. Uh. Oh, it's EBID. There you go. Now it's doing the bed. Okay, getting the bed. Oh, it's yeah. going to do the same thing, the same P P E I P I E. What we call it? Yeah, it's going to be the P I D P I D for the bed. What? Is he, oh, it looks like it's heating. It says, what is the extruder? Oh, well, no, it's not heating right now. Well, it says heating, but the temperature just 25. It's like it's heating to zero degrees, what it looks like. What I don't get is why it's the nozzle temp that I see rise. So, what it, so yeah, I'm watching it right now. It looks like it's heating to zero. Is the bed getting out? No, it's not. Like I said, I think I think the the temperature I'm trying to heat to is zero. So I don't think I think because it says heating, it says heating's in progress, but the temperature set to heat to is zero. Yeah. So like if you heated the nozzle, if you want to do that real quick. Then uh, I think it would look, yeah, it would show. Yeah, because it says it says um, bed temp twenty five slash zero degrees. Yeah, they just resetted the printer. Okay. So you actually editing the program in this menu as well, or are you just sending? Yeah, we are kind of changing the uh, the program. Yeah, okay. I got more from like a front end of the interface. Okay, now it still says PE cycle 08, but it's again showing that it's heating to zero degrees. And then one again, once again, it's the extruder warming up. So it's interesting because it's not even showing the extruder warming up on this menu. So maybe this menu is just not working correctly. Because I don't see the extruder warming up on my display here. Hmm. Let's me do that.
The bed is not eating. I wonder if, uh, let me check the, on the other side of the bed here. Sure. Uh, everything's still connected. The probe is on there in the center. The contacts still look like they're soldered in there. And then if I follow this, it is still wired directly into the board. So nothing has come loose. On the mechanical side, everything looks good. Okay. Oh, that was going. Cool. That was weird. Oh, yeah, now it's showing 60 degrees over here as well. And I can feel some. Uh, it's, it's getting there. It's almost yep. at 50. Okay, so that's just a weird thing. I have to... So I'm interested to see how much differential there is in temperature between the top and the bottom. Oh, for real. A lot, because the eating element is under the aluminum bed. Right, so... I guess you just adjust for that in your profiles. When I look at the curve, it doesn't seem to be too bad. I'll leave my, I'll stop touching it so I can eat it properly. It's doing a, well, the bed is not as crucial as the extruder is because it's lower temperature. Yeah. And it's more stable to keep warm. Yeah, it's also a bigger surface and it's, and really after you get past the first layer, it's not even really that critical at all. Looking at the graph, it's pretty good. It's going a bit over, but not too crazy over. It's weird, because before it was showing the cycle, but now it's not. It's just ready for a command. Oh, so it's it already stopped heating up. It must be done. Yeah, I just turned it off. It's dropping. Oh, okay. Okay, that's good. So... Oh yeah, there's some thing. Can you you open your software you use to run the your slicer? My slicer, yeah. There's actually one thing we need to look before. This is the slicer, and I think I already have a well. I have some profiles set up, so I was looking at something else. Give me one second, and then there. There's our printer. Okay. Uh, oh, okay, cool. You I know think that? I'd actually wrote, well, I actually put this together myself, so. So you don't have the bed to leveling and on it? Yeah, well, yeah, I don't. I did this like two months ago, but I don't really remember what I went through, but don't, uh, uh, definitely the mean, worth looking over. In the meantime, I want to check with you, uh, go on the main menu. When so you should see. Name, name, what are you looking for specifically? On the printer, on your printer. Oh, on my printer, okay. Yeah, I want to make sure you have the, the, the correct parameter and stuff. Okay, if you go, so what, what am I looking for? Uh, configuration. Configuration. Oh, yeah, the scrolling makes way more sense now. 
Okay. You see, you see a delta calibration somewhere? I see delta. I see delta calibration. Yes. Do you see advanced setting? See settings. Uh, see delta settings, load settings, store no, settings. You didn't Are... have to go on delta calibration. Delta. Delta settings. Go... No, go back one, one more. Okay. Uh, do you have a dense setting? Probe Z offsets? Probe Z offsets, yeah, I see that. Advanced setting? Well, whenever I get a probe Z offset, I lets me enter as an offset. Yeah, yeah and you can change oh, it. Oh, above it. Uh, okay, yeah, advanced settings on there. Okay, so this one, if you scroll down, you should see probe offset somewhere. Oh, I see probe offset, okay. So, and if you keep scrolling, you should see Z probe wizard. Okay, Z Pro Wizard at the bottom, yep. So if you click that thing, you should your printer is gonna move to these Wait. It's... Oh shit. I just turned it off. I didn't have the probe on it. Oh yeah, sorry about this one. Okay. Uh, make sure to have the probe on it. It's gonna go probe is the bed. I was gonna crack the bed. I did have an extra bed. No, it did not. Oh, okay. Woo! Thank God. Yeah. Then you should have stopped just at zero. Okay, it is at zero. So well, I don't know. I just uh yeah, once it started to move, I was trying to plug it as fast as possible. Okay, so let me put the let's see, let me run this around here. So when you do that, technically let me do it with mine just to make sure before Can we plug it back in. Yeah, plug your printer back in. Okay. It actually seemed like it stops, but I don't know. That well, it's still definitely stop, but I don't know if it's if it stops in purpose. But normally, I think like um, the belt didn't start slipping or anything, so it's like I knew it, it hit the bottom or something. I don't know. It seemed like it knew that it hit the bottom. It stopped. Well, I mean, right now everything stopped because I unplugged it. Okay. Good. So I don't know. Right now, the the menu did not reset because it's still plugged into the computer. So right now it says move nozzle to bed Z two point zero zero probe probe Z offset and it's got some weird characters like a minus star dot comma open parentheses after that and it says move one millimeter is the only thing. I can oh no okay I can still scroll. Yeah, I can still scroll, but um, not really sure what you would like me to do there. Okay, that's that's why I'm not a big fan of this is the the uh, wizard for that. That's why I do it with printer face. Gotcha. But if you want to do it with printer face, it's super easy. Let's do that then. Let's go with easy. I like easy. <laughs> so. Nozzle. Offset. Uh, oh, there you go. You got a piece of paper? I do not. Let me grab something. What do I need to write down? Do you need to copy and paste it? Okay, let's see here. What uh what do you want me to write down? Okay, so 
Oh yeah. Uh, what you're gonna say? Preference. Manage printer. I change the thing. There's also a notepad on my computer if you want to use that. It can be pretty helpful. You want to copy and paste something. There you go, that should be good. So now your nozzle should move. Um, you know what? Let's do that instead. So now your printer is going to home. Okay. It's going to set the temperature for the bed. It's going to set the temperature for, it's going to wait for the bed temp to reach. Mm -hmm. Then it's going to move to Z100. Okay. Quite, it's going to go down slow. We won't go fast. It's going to activate and probe the bed. And then after it's done probing, it's going to start set the temperature for the extruder so as soon as it's done probing you have, you have to be quick to remove uh, the probe okay then it's going to set the extruder temp wait for so the whenever extruder. I start the print I need to have the I need to make sure every time I start the print that I have the probe on yeah okay and then Let's move it back to that. We don't need to lift a nozzle here anymore. Intercept the extruder. Going to do the line. That's fine. That's good. Okay. Don't know if you have to save it though. Not used to. Uh, uh, there's a save up at the top. No, right by the no, no, no. Hold on, I can do it. No, right. Oh. Save. Yeah, we'll see to name the same. So I'll save over the other version. Okay, that should be good now. That's that 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 G code. Always use it to start the print. Okay. It should be good. Yeah. There you go. Oh. All right. So I have some filament and I have some uh, prints loaded. So maybe we could just get. I have like a little coin basically on the size of a quarter as a test yeah. print. Like to just see if we can get that done early started. Yeah, if it starts and I'm, I'll, you know, I'll feel really good. It's going to go home. That's so fast. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, you can put the probe on it. Okay, the probe's on. Because whenever there's movement, if you, the probe gets activated, it's going to stop it. Okay. So instead of going to smash on the print bed, it's going to stop it. Because technically, if I do this G1, Z100, F1000, 
There we it's, go. It's going to move slowly. It's going to stop at 100. Yeah. Like you see, every time you're going to start a print, the printer, the 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 head's going to slowly go down this fast at 100 millimeter. So you have right. enough time to put the probe on it. If you oh, don't I got it. you. That's what is nice with a belt that you don't have to think about the probe. Yeah, I'm going to have to go to that. I just didn't want to invest any more money into this, any major money into this until we got. Uh, yeah. So it stopped before it hit the bottom. Now it's going to go to zero. Okay, perfect. Is there a space in between the probe and the bed? No, it looks like it's perfectly flat. Okay. Now I'm going to move it back to 100. Remove the nozzle, the probe. Okay, probe's removed. And now we're going to send it back to zero. Okay. Oh, yeah, it looks perfect. No, it moved, I think. Oh. Uh, yeah, it touched the build plate. How do you know? Um, can you see look, that? Look at the, oh, you can look, see the tip in the mirror. Yeah, look at the head. It's going to get close to move to the bell plate. And when it's going to touch, it's going to shift on one side. Mm, yeah. Let's see oh, that's because it's hitting. Okay. Gotcha. So, let's see. Yeah. Um. Not pretty. It's not pretty. Not pretty. Not at the moment. We're still calibrating. Uh, mm. I'm gonna get some filaments in here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's getting closer by the minute. Okay. Um, 831. Oh, zero. There you go. N503. Why didn't you recognize it? I don't hear that. Can you install the uh, no, we cannot. Uh, probe again? It's okay. Is there Install the probe on it. Okay. Probe is installed. Let's go. Uh, there's also film installed, so you have both. Uh, wait a second. Is there something I didn't do right with them, 503? I think there's something I... That's for fusion, you can cancel that. Feel like there's something I messed up with the M503. Okay. I'm gonna be right back.
Ah, there you go. Okay. I got to change the setting on the printer. Oh, yeah, the same thing. PID. Bed. Bed. Send. I'll go get something to drink. I'll be right back. So it's often going to be like that. Set something, doesn't work, go back to Marlin, fix it. They are recompiling everything now. Uh, yeah, I got to recompile everything.
What software do you use when you model? Do you use um, Fusion or SolidWorks? Mostly SolidWorks. But if I don't have access to it, I resort to uh, Fusion 360. Gotcha. Uh, the PID for the bed should work now. And M503 should work too. All right. It didn't take too long this time. Let's connect. Yes, sir. M five hundred one. That's good. Yep. Now, now I see. The thing is the probe installed on the button? Yes. We're gonna recalibrate the printer with the bed this time. <laughs> Just have to make sure it doesn't touch the clips. <laughs> Oh, it touched on that one. The other one didn't touch, but the last one did. Okay. You did touch the last one? Yeah, I mean, move the clips further out. Uh, yep. Okay. There we go, now we're good, clear two of them. Perfect. I'm gonna let her run. Oh yeah, now the bed PID is working. Fun fact, your nozzle PID is still there. That. Yeah, the nozzle PID, the setting for the PID for the nozzle is still there. Hmm. Well, that's awesome. Okay, oh yeah, this is iteration three.
Oh, I know why the nozzle was eating the glass before. Why is that? Because we did the, the calibration without the glass on the top. Oh, plate. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I think we recalibrated, I guess we did. M500, that's good. M501, M503. Yep, perfect. M303, eBed 60, S60, C8. Now, the bed should be eating up. No, again, it's the extruder. Oh, well, who cares? Okay, hold on. What did you do? Three or three, three minus one, uh, 60, C8. Off. Can you press on the reset button on the printer? What do you mean I hit? The reset. There's no reset option here. It's just at the normal display screen. Oh, you don't have a reset? You may re unplug it and plug it back in? Yeah. No. Yeah? Yeah. Both plugs? Oops. You can uh, unplug, replug. From the computer? No. Well, no, leave that unplugged in? Just the printer. Okay, so just the power. Okay, I plugged it back in. Perfect. It's going down. Now it's doing the bed. Nice. Okay. Hmm. Interesting.
So now it's going to recalibrate it again after you heat the bed? Is that what's going to happen? Huh? So it's going to recalibrate after you heat the bed? No, it's calibrating the bed right now. Yeah. It's calibrating about the dip temperature. So that too will be done. Oh, it's running the cycles again. Okay. Yep. Okay. You can press the dial. You can press the, the rotary switch. Okay. Perfect, that's N M five hundred. M five oh one. The PAD is saved from both of them. Perfect. Nice. Nice. All right. You oh, can shit. Oh, okay. Right. I you still can have the probe on there. I'll leave it. Leave it. Okay. Uh, actually, no. Remove the probe. Okay. Oh yeah. M eight four one Z zero. M five hundred. M five one one. G28 Z Uh yeah, put the put the probe probe back on. Yep. Okay. Okay, probes on. It's done homing? Uh, yeah. Okay, homed again. Hmm, that's weird. G1. F1000. Z100. You can remove the probe. Okay. 
Okay, removing the probe. I think it's moving really slow. Oh. Yep, yep, yep. I want it to go slow. Okay. I was moving so slow, I didn't even know it was moving at first. I was like, it's making noise. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe I said it too slow. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, you could probably do double or triple speed here. You're still be pretty slow. It's getting there, though. It's getting there. Yeah, you can see it now. I uh, get your piece of paper ready. Oh, you want the paper for spacing, not for notes. Yeah, yeah, for spacing. Uh, magazine paper is probably not the right stuff. I need to get an actual piece of paper. Okay. Here we go. <clears throat> Do we put the pair between the tip and the um? Yep. Is it done moving? No, it's still moving. We're about a centimeter away. All right. Almost there. Almost there. Perfect. That paper it's... is pinned in there. It's pretty tight. Oh, you can see right there. Okay. Try to move it. So now I can move it firmly, but it's still tight. Is it still tight now? Yeah, it's still held down. Now, now? It's, now I can move it freely. Okay. Don't don't put pressure on the bill plate. Just hold okay. the paper by a corner and Okay. That's right. Yeah, now it's like well maybe too loose. It's oh wait. I'm going the wrong way. I mean, now I can just push it through. No, it's a little tighter. It's no, a little it tighter. Move. Okay. What's the, the the Z height you have on the printer? There's a Z with a number. Uh, Z O oh, Z is point zero four. Point zero four. Well, you know what? I'm not I actually haven't really used this method very often because my other printer has auto leveling, and then I just do a Z calibration, and then I use the filament just to calibrate it normally once I get it close. So I'm not really too sure what it's supposed to feel like, but I think that's pretty good because I can move the paper around pretty well. It's probably a little bit lower than it needs to well, be, but I think it's it's a good place to start. So it's 0 0.4 pos positive. It's not negative. It is in the positive. So, okay, it, the Z actually it looks like it goes X, 0, Y, 0, Z. Yeah, okay, that's right. And it's 0 0.4. 0 0.4, yeah. Perfect. 9500. 9501. Good. Good. The film is loaded if you want to try to print. If you want me to try to run a little print. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so the first thing would be to raise it up. Um, well, I guess we can do that. Okay, so. 
Oh, you can do it in the in the, in the, pr in the printer. Actually, it's a good thing to try it on the printer too to see if it moves. Okay, so I got an info screen. Okay, I have the card in there. Uh, you need to re-slice. Well, I do need to re-slice. Because we changed uh, the start G code. Okay, so I need to then run upstairs and grab a toggle so I can put my... Uh, okay. Give me one second. Time with your time. All right. You should have like a. Oh, I know. Uh -huh. The cards in there. Oh, you want to do the Z? That'd be a good print to do. I've never actually ran that print, but I want to do it. Do you have a set of caliber? I do. Perfect. I can't wait for 2.6 to come out. All right. You want to rotate correctly, right? Uh, no, it's good. Uh, no, actually. Whoops, that was me. Here, go ahead. It's upside down right now. How does that work? What are you trying to do? Let me grab my mouse. Oh, there we go. So how do you know which is the X and which is the Y when you're looking at this view? I guess red is red is X, uh, X. or red is Y. You can rotate in this menu off to the side so you get the exact degrees you want. So I know I do it. Oh. 
You just reset the reset button to the. <clears throat> Here, I'm gonna show you something real quick. Oh, you got it. Oh, you got yeah. Okay. <clears throat> There you go. Finally, some software I know what I'm doing in. <laughs> <laughs> and this a piece of software where I'm totally lost. Yeah. The, the Wait, what is, do you normally know use as your slicer? Cura. Cura? But the more it goes, the more I might switch to Prusa slicer. They're getting really good. Yeah. I, I don't know. I really enjoy it. <clears throat> I've, I've seen some video of Thomas... Or Sandal or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, comparing both uh, Slicer and I must say Prusa seems to have a better finish than Cura does. Yeah. Oh, cool. I just like the interface. It's super easy to use. You can set stuff up real quickly. Oh, Cura, man. It's also super easy to use and user friendly. It's oh, okay. just the, in the back ends, there's something different between the two. It's, so gotcha. I'm curious. But Prusa is so big now. It's not like Yeah. So, yeah, they're both they're both on very large. They're both seems like to be the largest too. Yeah. All right, you're ready for me to slice this? Slice it, slap it on the machine. And uh let's hope it doesn't break break. Huh. <laughs> I guess it doesn't <laughs> see the SD card. It's always how it is when you first slice a piece of uh, something on the first run on a brand new Marlin firmware. You just hope it doesn't break. So where do I save this? I just save it on the card? Is, there, is the local C, is that where I want to save it? No, oh, that's your drive. Did you plug your USB? Your SD card? Yeah, it's in, um, it's in a dongle. Let's see. And the dongle doesn't show up. Huh. Well, it's only 12 minutes to cut this whole piece. Well, that sucks. In my other printer, I use a USB or use a, a USB stick. Hmm. Okay, let me see. Maybe if I. Let me try a different port. You got a bunch of different types of USBs on this computer. No. Okay, I'm gonna unplug the printer from here. I think this other port is the one we used last time. I don't know if that makes any difference. Well, if I could get this uh, USB stick to show up on my computer, I could probably start a print. Now, here we go. Okay, this time I made a sound. So I guess it matters what port I put it into. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because there's some know. port or, was... or they're just... Uh... Uh... I don't know. Anyways, I haven't figured out all the USBs. There's too many of them. Uh, there's some port now. They're just power port, strangely enough. Yeah. Okay. So, I feel like we have the, um, I think we have the printer in some kind of configuration mode because I don't see... Um, like any print settings or any print options. Uh, restart it, unplug it, and replug it. Okay, so I'm gonna okay, so unplug it from, unplug it from the um, power the computer. Outlet. Power outlet too. Okay, I'm unplug it from the computer. Okay, give it a few seconds. Okay, I'm going to try to... Is there an issue if I move the printer around? Is it going to screw up all the calibrations? Shouldn't change them too badly. Uh, I'm going to push it back a little bit so I can show you the screen. Well, it doesn't really matter. 
Yeah, it's still in this configuration. It says screen info motion temperature configuration. There's no like um, print options or anything. Can you scroll the wheel? Yeah, it's all the way down here. I'll just show it to you, but um, yeah. Oh, fuck. It's not plugged in. Okay. So, uh, I don't think you're going to be, can you see that screen at all? Oh, man, I don't, don't see okay. much. No, I just, uh, that's fine. So, we have screen info, oh, motion, temperature, and configuration, the only options. Oh, you're kidding me. Ah. Uh... Gonna Did you plug the computer back in? I need to have access. Why can't I? Gonna need access to your PC again. Oh yeah. I think I know what I did wrong. Okay. Well, as long as we can fix it. So, oh, you have access. Yeah. Still have access to the PC. What's the total size of this thing? Like a centimeter by a centimeter? Uh, what, sorry? Oh, that cube. Did you make it like one centimeter by one centimeter or something? Because it's only tw like 12 minutes or something to print. 20 by, uh, 20 by 20. Oh, okay. So two centimeters by two centimeters. Yeah. SD card. Hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's you know, that's not that big of a deal. Yeah, that would have been another three hours for me to figure out. <laughs> you can plug back in the printer on the PC. Oh, it's already plugged. The printer's plugged in. Oh, it's plugged in. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Oh, and it's always, always a stupidity like that. Oh, yeah, man. you It's so hard to, like, I mean, you got 3,000 lines of code going through. Like, if you did make a mistake, that would be super crazy. Yeah. But it's surprising to me that SD support is not already activated from default because. Yeah. It's rare a printer without the SD support. Yeah. <clears throat> so now you should be able to print from the SD card. That's good. Do you like to watch your computer uh, run whenever you're compiling stuff? Yeah, I usually uh, check it. 
Uh, I just enjoy watching to see how fast it would get up to. How much I can push the machine. If you can stop your square machine, square app. Your, what? If you can remove your screen, screen sharing. My God, that was hard to say. What, you may remove my screen sharing? Yeah, I'll show you something. Oh, I got you. So, on the side here, I have dials that shows oh, okay. the performance of the PC. So, if I go and compile. Yeah. Like, That's pretty cool. You look, you look at this one, you're going to see it go up and down. There's a graphic there. Nice. But if we want to be crazy about it. Oh, yeah, you're a little bit faster than mine. Well, you got 12 cores and I've got eight. So, yeah, you should be pushing it. But not all. The core. Yeah. Next. Right. But I mean, see, yeah, that's the thing. Like, I don't think I would even have a noticeable difference in speed using the way I use my computer if I went to the Ryzen 9. Because I really wanted to go Ryzen 9. I think my next computer will be able to support a Ryzen 9. When, well, like, now, a couple of years. the laptops now are able to. Yeah, I think they just started adding them to the Ryzen nines to the laptop world. Because when I was looking just a few months ago, there was only like two or something on the market, and they're like four or five grand. Yeah. And now they're cheaper too, so that's help. Yeah, but like they, um, you get a you get an i nine in a laptop. But at the same time, it was the same kind of thing. You're looking at 4,000 plus, and the performance metrics are marginally better at at best. Yeah. Between uh, the Ryzen 7 and the Ryzen 9, uh, so running this kind of stuff. Well, now also, uh, the new Ryzen they came out with are way much, way much more powerful, too. Uh, if you want to start sharing your screen so I can take control again. Sure. Oh yeah, that's me go ahead. I gotta give you control real quick. Okay, it's all you. Yep. Let's upload that. Oh, it's still going. One thing I don't like about uh Zoom is they added this new app bar. I wonder if I can turn it off on here. Yeah, oh, closed dock. Oh, holy cow, that's so obnoxious. <laughs> <clears throat> And normally that's that maybe has been below the screen, so I never saw it. Also, normally I'm running two screens, so I just put on the other screen and forget about it, but yeah. <clears throat> All right. So now it's it's finished compiling. Now it's uh, saving it. Okay. Now oh, that's done. Okay. Uh, M five hundred one. 501. So that's to load it. 333. Uh, do I need to do G33? Yeah. Yeah. 
Did you tear the tree again? Okay, I don't have the um. I do not have the thing installed. Oh. Okay. Is it? Did you unplug it? No. The printer's plugged in right now. Uh, is it moving the printer? It was. Here, let me. Uh, that's why I was saying that I don't have the head installed. I forgot to ask if it was or not. Hold on one second. Did we just stop it in time or it went bang on that? No, it, it crashed, but it's fine. All right. <clears throat> Is the probe installed now? Uh, it says probing failed, okay. which makes sense because there's no... Can you want to lift it back up and then I'll, I'll add the... Uh... Yeah, watch your hands. Okay, the probe's installed. Wait, hold on, hold on, I'll start. Popped off. Okay, probe's installed. <clears throat> We're gonna go better with a probe. Oh, it touched the cable though. Damn, I, I think I touched the wire. Oh, it's gonna be fine. It's gonna screw up the first. Uh... The first probe yeah, and the other one are going to be fine. That's why I like to have a BL touch. You run the cable, you don't have to mess with it. It's never in the way. Yeah, I'm looking forward to making that change. Well, if it was you, if it were you, I wouldn't install the new belt, the, the new bracket for the belt plates until I'm you installed hear the, you. If it was you, before installing the the bed solid to the printer, yeah, I would wait to have the BL touch. Because okay. if the bill, if the bed is rigid to the bill plate and the nozzle go down, it can crash and break the glass. But now it's on spring, so if even if it goes down, it's gonna dampen the air. The, the... I gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. That's a really good point you just made. Yeah. Yeah, I never thought about the uh, benefit of uh, springs for that purpose. So, huh, that's pretty cool. Okay, that's good. So your eight, your height on the printer, it's six hundred point eighty three millimeter right now. What's that? 
You can print 600 and 600 millimeter high now. Perfect. Uh, okay, so should be good to start the G code. Okay, let's see if it's there now. It should yeah, show. Print for media. There we go. XYZ calibration. Print. There we go. Oh, shit. All right. Oh, I do need to leave this on. Okay. Yeah, 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 you leave it on. Oh, we didn't prime the nozzle. Huh? I didn't prime the filament. Oh. Yeah. Uh, cancel the print. Oh, wait, we can... You know what? This is manual. I can do this manually. Yeah, true. So I'll just... Uh, yeah, I'll just prime it when it's coming down or something. What's the prime? What's the... Uh, is that going to like print a line or anything like that? Do you have anything? Uh, no, it should not print a line. It should just go. Okay. I think before I had it printing a line, but I might have changed it. Because the line was doing something weird, like printing the middle of the thing. I tried to make it print a circle around the bill plate, but I uh, was never able to make it happen. Hmm. Let's see that. That'd be pretty cool. And how long is that called now? <laughs> what? How long is that called now? Code? The 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 call the for the 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 zoom. Oh, the call for the zoom. Almost so, three hours. Yeah. Oh, oh well, shit happens. Yep. Yeah, I would like to say this isn't something that's normal for me, but it it is. <laughs> this is not even that normal at all. Actually, uh, now I meet with my clients in three-hour blocks. Huh? So when I meet with my clients for paid work, I meet with them in three-hour blocks. Okay. Yeah, because we, we work through this stuff together, so... Um, yeah. <laughs> Just... Oh, it's up to 110. What the fuck? Seen the bed to one ten. Whoa! You just killed it. Kill it. Pull the plug. Oh no! It's cooling down. Yeah. What the fuck? I thought you put eighty. In. I thought you put eighty in there. I wonder if it's my G code. No. Would that be my? That wouldn't be my G code, would it? Yeah. Where do you see the temp? Oh, so in the start menu, when you let me drag this out of the way. Oh yeah, bad one ten. Two eighty nozzle. Okay, we gotta change that. Let me let me drag this thing out of the way for you real quick. Hold on. That's a freaking hot. <laughs> okay, I'm not sure. You want to go ahead and change? If you have either change, because I'm kind of far away from the laptop. Oh my god, your poor printer would have a freaked out right there. I don't understand. You know what? Let's make it there. Oh yeah, for PLA, yeah, six two twenty. <gasps> So you go five degrees hotter on the first layer? Huh? You like to go five degrees hotter on the first layer? Yeah, it's, uh, it's squish it well. Oh, and I'm going to clean off. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and clean off the build plate. Do we do? Let me 
bibiga. Una. All right, I'll have to clean here. <laughs> yeah, so now you can uh, re-slice it and uh, send it to your SD card. Oh, that's right, the re-slice it again. How fun is that? Okay, so it's safe to uh, disconnect the computer from the... Yeah, 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 it's safe. Because I guess that's the only port I can use for uploading for whatever reason. <clears throat> And uh, we almost set fire to your place, man. <laughs> Don't tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> One dan, poor he the bed. I'm not sure he would have sustained that. I already feel he, if he's sending my printer, my other printer to 80 bill play temp when I do uh, Pidgey. Okay, so we're going to just save this over this. Yes, actually, I should delete all these other ones. Well, it's up to you. Well, because I don't want to. I'm going to do it real quick. Because they're no longer um, working. Well, yeah, we're, I don't know. We're not using the cheat codes anymore. So I don't want to. I don't no. want to start a print with an old G code. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you can re-plug the printer on the PC now. Oh, I should plug it. Keep it plugged in. I'll do that. Oh, you know what? I'm a silly goofball. I can plug. I can plug them both. So, okay, my toggles got. There we go. I don't have to keep on plugging everything. Man, I have a longer cord. Oh, and now I can. Just this way. Okay, you're gonna start the prints. All right. Okay, so you know, let me uh, grab a screwdriver. I got some loose parts on here. I'm trying to do some upgrades. The thing is, it's like wobbling because it's pretty stupid. Yeah, screwdriver. Here's a little screwdriver. Well, whenever you're ready, you can start a print. Oh, yeah, prime your nozzle. Sure. No, I just want to tighten up all these little screws. <laughs> I bring the film into the head. Oh, yeah, I should do that too. No, my uh, my fan is loose on here. Oh. I was, well, I was trying to build a mod for it, so I loosened a bunch of stuff. I'm not sure. Oh, I think I might have to take this off. Do you still have the original fan on yours? Did you? Huh? Fuck it. Let's just go. Let's just, uh, let's just, I'm going to tighten these down and. 
Whatever, still, I think if it's layers loose on this part, it's going to be okay. Just uh, keep the keyboard working here. Um, Oh my gosh, it was It was you know, Watch the hardware's tight. <laughs> okay. All right. So cards in. Okay. So what? Okay. So the next step is to start the print. Oh. Let me preheat it. Uh, you put uh, no, don't preheat it. Well, how am I gonna push the filament through? Oh, uh, yeah, preheat the nozzle then. Yeah. Then you're gonna have to wait for it to cool down fully before. Yeah. You put the. That's why I hate those nozzle things. I'm gonna go grab some more water. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I think the first night I started the printer, I burned to the two probe. <laughs> I I would forget them on the nozzle and start the print. Oh yeah, <clears throat> yeah, it's easy to do, man. For oh, I did. All right, so we're at temperature. Uh oh. What up? It's not, uh, it's not doing the dance. <clears throat> Oh, hold on. Oh, something. There it goes. There we go. There we go. Our phone. Getting a good problem. <clears throat> okay, so now we can. Is there a little reset? Can you make a reset button? That's good. Yeah. Temperature is going to. Oh, yeah, I forgot there's a reset button. <clears throat> I, okay. I, I put the temp to zero since it's extruding. Okay, yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to say print. Oh, no, not now. Not now. Not now. Why not? <clears throat> By the time the bed heats up, it will cool the, to keep the, the zip will cool down. Yeah, you can do that. I'm not too worried about it. <clears throat> Holy the GB that's fast. <clears throat> oh, the bed's already warm. Oh no, it's not. At one seventy. It's already down to one seventy. <clears throat> say one fifty odd on the The extruder fan should have started. What should have started? The fan on the extruder. Oh, the fan. Yeah, it's not going. It's not going? It was earlier. <clears throat> Let's 
It was raining earlier. Whenever we started the print. It's still hot. <clears throat> 40 degrees. Uh oh. Oh wait, the temperature's going up already on the uh Did you start a printer? The print? Yeah, but uh, I thought it was gonna calibrate. Uh no, apparently I not. Thought it, <clears throat> I thought it was gonna hit you return the calibrate, so I don't need to have the probe on there then. Uh, actually, yeah, because it's not gonna level the bed. Okay. Oh, yeah, now the fan's running. But uh, you should turn it off. Let's turn it off? Why? How? Because the temperature, the nozzle temperature is not supposed to go up. What do you mean? It's at 215. But it's Everything not... looks right yeah. to me. Oh, yeah. now we're at 220. You may shut it down. Yeah, yeah. It's not supposed to go up. Why did it exceed the temperature? <clears throat> the set temperature. That's a good question. Let me move this thing again. Hold on, let me move this for you. Oh no, I keep right? oh, oh, let me move real quick. Let me take control. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Go ahead. So what are you looking for? <clears throat> Do you think it's anything to go with the PID? No, oh, it's not that. We'll wait for it to cool down. I just don't know why. This is something. Oh, yeah. Gotta wait for the time to go down. Worst come to worst, we can go back at it tomorrow. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, in the meantime, I'll look how to make it start without the nozzle eating up. Because we know all the firmware is good. Now it's to start G code. Okay. Uh, I'm curious to see something though. Um, because it does not recognize the G29. Hmm. <clears throat> okay, um... Yeah, 
I'll make some change tomorrow to your G codes. Okay. And to instead <clears throat> of leveling the bed each time you go to print, it's gonna level the bed. You're gonna have to go on a printer, level the bed. So there's yeah. gonna be no eating up. I'm okay with that. I think that's good for right now because the probe is gonna be a pain to keep taking on. But you know. yeah, yeah. So you're gonna save the 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 bed to the the mesh the well, right. leveling to the EEPROM, and every time you start the G code, you're gonna start with um something else. So instead of here, like. Instead of doing that here and that, let's tweak it a little bit. <clears throat> uh, it's going to be it. M four twenty S one There you go. So actually X the So it's going to home. Enable. Last. Saved. Mesh. There you go. That's going to be better. Is now it's gonna home the printer. It's gonna enable the bed, the mesh. <clears throat> then it's gonna warm up the bed, then the nozzle. Then it's gonna move, reset its stuff, and it's gonna go. Okay, perfect. So we'll do that for cure for for. Oh yeah, we're gonna save those settings. Yeah, that's just for the individual print settings. Well, there's two different saves you just did, <clears throat> but that's fine. Um, okay, so you want to try it one more time? Uh, just need to change something, or and or do we know? Oh, okay. If it wants to launch. Why well, don't I have access? Let me see. Wait. What do you need access for? It doesn't want to click. What do you want to launch? The Arduino? Oh, yeah. Oh, there we go. It's going now, I think. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Now it's going. Control F. Um, let me check something. Okay. Uh, if you go on your printer setting on the screen, you pull the you... printer settings. Wait, uh, which which printer settings? On your controller, if you go into motion, yep. you should see the option level bed. Don't click it. What should I see? Level bed. Yeah, I see level bed. Perfect. Don't don't click it. Okay. 
So that's how we calibrate it. If anything, it's out of calibration. So technically, we don't need to uh, to change anything in 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 that. Okay, cool. So that's good. Uh, if we can re-upload the cube, re-slice it. Okay. One more time. Third time's the charm. There's a reason for that. Same. Yep. Yeah, let's try this again. Oh, where did the file go? No idea. Is it, uh... Oh, no. It's... Where did you save those files? Download? That... Download, I believe. Okay, yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's two centimeters by two centimeters. Do you want to rotate it again, or... There you go. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, let's see if the setting... There's... Well, you what? want to you want to go to printers. You're not filming. You want to go to printer settings. Oh, okay. You don't want to go to. Why did that change? Oh, we have to. I don't think we saved it. Oh uh, no, I know why. So we need to why. drop the nozzle temp down too. I know why. Why are you doing that? Uh, <clears throat> Can you uh, start Prusa? Absolutely, yeah. We had two windows of Prusa open at once. Oh, okay. So one has the good... Because if we go back... There you go. Well, we still have the, the temp was too hot. The nozzle temp was still needs to be changed. Like, yeah, right there. You want to put that away? Oh, I know. 215 is correct. The first letter. And I, I'm sorry, I was I'm getting confused. Okay. Oh, that's fine. Oh, wait. Ninety. Yeah, ninety. Or is that I don't know. Yeah, thanks. There you go. All right. Well, let you do the rest. Okay. So we'll just hit thirteen minutes slice. Now on the printer, you're gonna go in motion and select level bed and make sure you have the probe installed first. Right. Do you mean do the level bed right now? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> hey, real quick, what was that? Uh, is that motion? What was it? You got motion. No, no, you got motion level bed. Motion level bed. Oh, shit. Yeah. Hold on. Let's take it. I wish they gave me a little check. Oh, you have to heat the bed anyway. Okay. <clears throat> the probe's on there. Heating the bed. The tissue degrees. I'm seeing the nozzle, though. It is? Yes. Okay. Uh, oh, hold on, I'm watching it. Is it 29 degrees? I think it's good. I think it's good. It starts at 29. Oh, that's right. You, you had to heat to 29. That's fine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, if you can move the camera so we can see it go. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, how beautiful is that? That's looking good. The, the more I look at the 
glass plate like that, the more I want to install one on my printer now. Oh, you don't have a glass mirror? I, I have a glass. I don't have a mirror. Oh. Because I don't know if yours came with the glass bed. I kind of prefer the clear, personally, but it's just easy to find these. Is it done already? Uh, so, yeah, I guess so. Ready. It says ready. Okay. Uh, now, you're going to go in... Uh, wait, can you open front face? Uh, sure. Oh, I can oh, no, I'm... Open. I don't think it's gonna work. Why not? Yeah, you have to make a shortcut. Oh. Put it back there and make a shortcut. That's something I don't understand. Create shortcut. Copy path. Show more right. options. Let's do this or, for now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's redo that then. Uh, G28. Are you running calibration or what? No, I'm going to make sure. The probe's that... not on. Huh? The probe's not on. Can you put the probe back on? Yep. Let's make sure we're on the same stuff here. Okay. Perfect. The bed's heating up. Yeah. I think. Yeah, eating up. It's weird because it got to 47 and it slowed down. I guess, okay, 49, there it goes. Could be also the spring that are not fully adjusted because if you look, you're at minus 110 here and you're like 393 here, so you have like 0.4 millimeter difference from one side to the other, right? So it's quite good. But usually, after you run that, you would have to go into configuration. And store setting. Oh, okay. Printer. Yeah. But since I'm on Marlin, you can um printer freeze, you can just save them there. So every time you reload it, you see the G twenty nine mesh is all loaded here. So let me see something. I'm just gonna make a note here. So what's the command for save? Uh M five oh one. M oh it's M five oh one M five zero zero it's to save M five zero zero 
M five hundred. Yeah, M five hundred one is to retrieve what's saved on the EEPROM. So, okay, so M five M five hundred is saved, and when would I use M five hundred one? M five hundred one is to retrieve what is saved on the EEPROM to see the info. Oh, to so view it. Yep. M five hundred two is to restore it to default. Hold on one second. M say yeah. M five hundred one view saved. Okay, and what's the other one you said? And M five hundred two is to restore to default. M five hundred two. Okay. Restore the prompt to default. And M503 is to view the current setting on the printer. M503? Yeah, view current setting on, on printer. It's like, let's say you do your bed leveling. Right. And you don't do an M5 M500 and you type in M503, you will see your bed leveling. But since you didn't save it to EEPROM, if you do an M501, it's going to retrieve the EEPROM as it is saved on the printer. Gotcha. So... One is for saving it. The other one is to re to go get what's saved on the printer. The other one is to see the current setting saved on the printer. And the M502 is to go reset everything to how it is set in uh, uh, Arduino. Okay. So that's good. Now you can remove the... Now let's bring it back up. You can remove the probe. Now you're moving the probe. And we should be able to print a nice little cube. Okay. So now I'm going to start to print. File selected, processing, bed leveling on, processing. Wait, bed leveling it's... on? Yeah, bed leveling on. It says here bed leveling on. That means... It knows there's a bed that need there's a mesh that needs to be selected on the right. printer. Okay. Now it's warming up the bed, just right. like we want it to do. Oh, also, I'm gonna give you a trick. Hairspray. It's magnificent to stick stuff to the bill plate. Oh, nice. Mostly PTG, you won't have glass coming off with it. <laughs> what? PTG when you print with it and it shrinks so much that when you when it's cold and you want to remove it from the build plate, it can actually remove a chunk of glass. Whoa. Yeah, so I've seen people having issues with the, the Teflon stuff, but Teflon, PETG, there's a lot. Yeah. That's that's no, why I mean, they're like removing the coating, but I'm not I mean, I wouldn't oh. think it would pull the glass off. Yeah, yeah, the glass come off with PTG. PTG is good for that. Uh another good trick to use is air spray. It's gonna be super sticky when it's warm. When it's cold, it doesn't get sticky, but it's gonna leave like a residue to your print bed. But the yeah. best material so far is PEI sheets. And often they're spring, they're spring steel. So once you print, you can just peel it off, crack it. Yeah, that's what's on my Prusa, I believe. Yeah. That's what I installed on my uh, ANET. And that's what I'm can looking Can you get them in a circle sheet like this? Yeah, you can get some. Uh, you can get some. I'm trying to find one. Yeah, I'll have to look. The day I find one, I'm going to be so happy. Yeah. Yeah, that would be the best if I could get that. It's that yeah. on there. Oh yeah, it's it's so magic that thing. Yeah, that's one of my favorite things on my Prusa. 
Uh -huh. Oh, you have to click the 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 wheel. Okay. Ooh, sounds like it's scraping. Is it printing? Oh yeah. no, it's not. What it's doing is it. Holy crap! Okay, so the uh, the motor is pushing the filament out, not in. Oh. Okay. Easy fix. Uh, stop it. Okay. Oh, we love those one. That might be my fault. I might have put the motor in backwards or something. No, no, no. Um. Okay. Um. Ba, 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 ba. Oh my God! Are we gonna ever finish? <laughs> uh. <laughs> Here's what we can do. Now, we're going to go the easy way. We're going to flip the pin. On the right. on the motherboard, or I reversed the direction. Oh, I I rebuilt it so that the uh, that's how I did before. I, re okay. I flipped it around mechanically. I can I can do it mechanically. I remember how to do it now. Oh yeah, you're just gonna change the pin. Yeah, I just gonna move the the material to the other side essentially, so that it is going the right direction. I think it's better anyways because uh, where's my? Oh. Well, we we can do it in Arduino too. Um, I can do whatever you want to do is fine with me. I can do it in about five minutes or Whoa. something like that. We'll do it in Arduino. Not a big deal. Okay. Not a big deal. <clears throat> that's that's what is fun having Arduino when you know how to use it. Yeah. Is For there... sure. Yeah, I think I already swapped this once. Because the the um, I installed it backwards, I think originally, but I think yeah, it's probably I don't remember. I think this way, yeah, this way is working with the default Arduino or the default default Marlin. So yeah, maybe just fix it here so we publish it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was like, you know, I was trying to force it in, and then it was making all kinds of noises. I'm like, what the heck is going on here? I was wondering because when I looked at the filament, it wasn't all the way, it was like halfway through the tube, and I was like, well, how did that happen? But I was like, I'll just do that later. <laughs> yeah. Often something that happens and we don't realize it. That's why Chinese kids are a pain in the ass. They revert to change and like you want to make it work, but they don't make it work. It's like they just take parts, shove them together, set up a quick and easy, dirty firmware, shove it on the board, and they just packed everything in the box. And half of the time, there's always a stepper that goes the wrong way around. <clears throat> yeah, that's pretty crazy. Yeah, I would not recommend this printer to really anybody unless you just wanted to build something from scratch and 
you wanted all the parts to be in one kit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, but personally, unless you're yeah. planning to program and rebuild it and like customize every part of it. Yeah, like just... yeah, having the money just to get parts and extrusion and stuff. I would buy the kit. But uh, well, I mean... you have the ability to go and uh, customize everything you want. I mean, like you understand how to use, like make all the changes. Um, I mean, th I guess the issue is to get something with this tall of a build volume. I was looking at really there wasn't any other options. This looks like a ten thousand dollar printer. So, so, and then that was huge because it was like um, one one meter by you know it would have been like two meters by two meters by two meters or something. Yeah. Well, it also goes at how you value your time. Let's say. Right. It's a three hundred dollar printer. Well, here in Canada, I spent over a thousand hour on it. A thousand? Yeah. Oh yeah, I had a lot of trouble with that girl. <laughs> Holy cow! <laughs> so, I so, put about forty hours into this thing. Yeah, a thousand. Holy well, cow! Well, first I have a custom aluminum plate that I machine on the spot. Oh I wow! All the print printed part-time ad and stuff like that yeah i mean it's it's impressive what you know don't get me wrong i just i had no idea you had that much time into it that's like yeah well i i put the time in it so the other people don't have to but right if i would have to value my time that printer is now worth twenty thousand. wow at 20 yeah. bucks an hour well if i remove the print time for all the parts on it I would say I may have more like two hundred hours on it, so it's more like yeah. a four thousand dollar printer now. Yeah, exactly. But still, it, it's crazy how you when you add up your time, it's either like you pay four thousand yeah. bucks for a printer that works, or you put five hundred hours on a printer that doesn't work. Right, and it's it's risky too because yeah. you don't even know. If yeah, it's, a, it's you don't it's know how much time it's going to take to actually finish the project. You keep thinking, "Oh, we're almost done," and then another hour goes by. Another hour goes by. This yeah. is not the only project I have running like this. I've got several where yeah. they've been going on for so long. This is the only one that. Well, yeah, and some of them I've I've budgeted. I've already like taken. A, I've quoted the whole project, so it's just coming out of my pocket the time. And other ones. The client's paying for the time, but at the end of the day, if I go over too much, I got to pay for it. Yeah. Well, that's where it's nice to have a big community based behind a printer because the the time wasted to try to fix a problem has been solved by somebody else. Yeah, I mean, I did all the search and I could, that's what I was saying. I couldn't find any resources for this specific printer to set up borrowing um, anywhere. Yeah. So, and there's a lot. There's a lot of guys on the Facebook page who decide to go with uh, um, duet boards and stuff like that. So it's another ecosystem you have to install on your printer. Yeah, I mean that's why I was monitoring uh, Facebook to see if I could find somebody that had one working and was willing to just to tell me what to do because I was like. I had no idea it was going to be this elaborate. I thought it was going to be like, upload this, download this, and then upload to the printer, and then it will run. You know, here's this update you need to run, or something, something like that is what I was expecting to, us to do. Some kind of, and then yeah. you said, I don't know, like, oh, it's a little bit more <laughs> than that. But this is still like way more than that. It, so you're recompiling not... right now, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, just to okay. invert the pin instead of you doing it manually. Yeah, because, yeah. yeah, I can do it mechanically by just the rearranging the directions of everything, but this is probably faster. But, and like, then... if you go one day and you install um, a BMG drive on it, like what I have, a geared extruder, Yeah. the line here, you're going to have to change it to false. Because the gear extruder, it's pushing the filament like, like with two tooths but the one driving right. it is in reverse versus the 
the yours. Yeah, is I had the same thing with the Bond Tech that I have on there now. Oh, I mean, yeah, my Bond? other printer I had to do that. Yeah. The other but one you have the Bond Tech. Somebody published the code for that, so I just copy and pasted it in. Yeah, but changing one thing at the time, it's not hard. It doesn't take much time to change it. Well, if you know where to look. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's when, a big key. You know what you're looking for. Otherwise, you're going through three thousand lines of code trying to figure yeah. out what to change. Yeah, but like what we did tonight to go from scratch, which honestly I'm quite impressed. I didn't lose my nerve on it because usually, man, I I would like I don't have hair for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, <laughs> but like my anet in the back, I spent maybe. Oh, fail. My ain't it. I may have spent like 500 hours just on Marlin itself. Holy but... crap. So you've done this. This is not the only time you've done this either. Yeah, but the, uh, the Marlin and the ain't it. It just like I started with the stock firmware on it and with all the stock part. But the firmware they gave in China was so outdated. It was more than 1.1. And I'm like, no, I'm not going with that. Because you see right now, we only have four tabs. More than 1.1, you have like 25 tabs open. Oh, wow. I'm like, no, I'm not doing going down that road. So I learned Marlin from scratch just to install a BL Touch. And just that oh, was about... Cool. 100 to 200 hours just to figure it out. And when yeah. that was figured out, I break the, the fucking board. I'm like, okay, the board is bricked. And now I have the USB ASP to unbrick it. And okay, I'm good. Then took me another 50 hours. I installed yeah. that. The SD card doesn't read anymore. Oh, like, no. Are you shitting me? The board, the, the board card is dead. Okay, fine. So I read it for a new board, and it's going great. Wow! I'm so like, is that that is that is that when you started using different boards at that point? Yeah, yeah. Usually, when a board dies, they change it. But like for this one, I'm like the board is fine. It's big enough. Cause the thing, the Marlin board, it's not a 250 megabytes. Like those are 250 megabytes, so they are big board with a lot of memory but marlin is after that memory so once you not marlin sorry the, the ain't at the board is half of that so as soon as you put some memory in it, it it's garbage hmm. all right that's done marlin is uploaded connect M501, we have the mesh, we have everything. Perfect. You can print. Okay. Oh, do you want to prime your filament first? Well, I can do it manually while it's warming up. Okay. Good. Once it warms up, I'll just push it through. I already, it's already pretty close. It's already like uh, at the tip. So I just need, I just can't push it through all the way. Okay. It's not too bad. Yeah, it should actually be fine, but uh, I would like to get a little bit more primed. Yeah. Oh. This is, uh, this is just the the junk that it came with. Yeah. That's also, cool. also a little upgrade you want to do maybe. It's just hardware. It's nothing uh, too complicated. Uh. It's to install MOSFET on it. What's that? Uh, MOSFET. I don't know what that is. Uh, that's going to help with um, uh, the power supply. It's less... It's less... Uh, Hard on the yeah. power supply, and also more safe. What does it do? So it's like a relay, if you want. Okay. 
So when your board sends 24 volts to the bed, because uh, what happens is all the power is going to go through the board. Yep. So it's a lot of amp going through the board. So what you want to do is instead send some current to a MOSFET. Okay. And then the MOSFET is going to take all the current out of the power supply. Hmm. And they are $8 each. You need two. So there we go. It's primed. So it's just that. You can find uh, files to wire them, uh, to mount them on the frame. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and to wire them, it's pretty easy. Uh, oh yeah, printer is going. All right, here we go. And the second thing is just to show you how easy it is to wire the. Uh oh. Okay. Oh, nice. Look at that thick it's line. It's so weird because of the mirror. It looks like the tip's actually floating, but it's not. This is so fast. Mm -hmm. Delta printer or super fast? It looks like it's, it's being reckless. <laughs> but Delta hey, are, just, but are just fast yeah. the way they work. Okay, yeah, uh, maybe a little bit of over extrusion, but I think it's fine. That that's uh, that's you who's gonna do it with printer face, actually. Yeah, I mean it looks pretty over extruded to me, but I'm not. I'm not super upset. I can dial that, and I think so in the flight there. To calibrate your extruder. Yeah, we should probably run some uh, calibrations. But... Well, that that I'll let you do it. You'll learn how to use your. Oh, I, yeah, that I can do myself. That's fine. Well, this is great. Oh my goodness! I have a printer. And it's running the. Uh... Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! That is so fast. There, I sent you a link. Doing eighteen minutes or twelve minutes? Because there's almost no infill, and Delta are just fast. Yeah, there's almost no infill. Yeah. So I sent you a link where you can uh, calibrate your printer. Oh, cool. So there's even the calculator. Yeah, I mean, I've I've seen plenty of printers. So not... And they use printer face, so for you, it's going to be easy to ch check everything and calculate everything. There's even the calculator on it. So the first thing, it's the MOSFETs. The second one is how to wire the MOSFETs. The third one is how to calibrate the, the extruder. Yeah, I got a that, that film is flipping all over the place. But really, like the, the MOSFET is just an extra safety on yeah, your mind. Yeah, I think the next thing is the swap out is the. Uh... Sorry, what did you say? The audio didn't pick up quite right. But I mean, it's still like, even though it's flipping, it's still pushing enough. Yeah, but now you have a fully working 3D printer. Holy cow. 
Like, if you want to make it quieter, you could change the stepper driver for TMC to 208. Yeah. Which is not hard because, like, you need four of them. You're going to buy a pack. Those things, you're going to buy a pack of five, so you have one spare. Because, like, maybe three, two bucks each. You swap them, you change them in Marlin. I'm not super worried about the noise, but um, yeah, I mean, if we're gonna, I might as well go ahead and do everything. Yeah. But I mean, now you have a working printer. That's what you wanted to have the other day a working printer. It's working. Yeah, this is incredible. So really, the only last thing you have to do is run your calibration for the step for the extruder and uh, maybe change some settings in your slicer, but that's it. Yeah. Yeah, I can I can get the calibration to work. That's not. Yeah, I'll just change the feed rate and stuff like that. It's not a big deal. Yeah. So I'm probably gonna end up. Uh, I cannot believe how fast this thing is feeding cylinder. Well, give me a sec. It is incredibly fast. <laughs> the flipping is relatively minimal compared to the speed that it's actually going at. See, I printed that shark fins. <laughs> Put that on mine. Yeah. Uh, send it, painted it, painted it, and all. This, I believe, was like two hour and a half. Oh, it's at 5% infill because this is the infill that I used to print my airplane. Oh, there's quite a lot of infill. 5%? No, more like they always printed 30%. I only, oh, I only use 15 to 20% because so well, the wave touch is the biggest issue with playing for, for, you know, RC playing. Yeah, it always depend on the application. Like right now, I'm also printing a chain link for my uh, other printer. Oh, cool. Each chain links are like half an hour, but 100% in fill. Whoa, why do you use that in fill? Yeah, take an half an hour to print them. Same, the, the this plate took a little bit longer, took like three hours, but it's mostly because why it's a you, big flat plate. Why would you want 100% info? Are you looking for strength or something here? Or like... Yeah, for strength. Oh, okay. Because you don't want that to fail with your cable in it. Yeah, makes sense. Like this, this hunger. Uh, it's my new belt tension for my A net. If yeah. I if I'm not wrong, that seventy percent infill took like four hours to do. And you can see the finish is okay. Right. It's not perfect, but it's better than a kick in the nuts. Yeah. I'm gonna grab my calibers. Thank you. 
So, okay, if the cube is off, where are you going to adjust the cube? Well, first you need you need to calibrate the the extruder, right? And technically, if the extrusion is right, the cube should be perfect. Yeah. So if it was, let's say, let's say I get the the all the other calibrations right, right? But it's not like my other printer, my Prusa. I know that if I was to print it, even though the the print is like the first layer looks perfect and the last layer looks perfect, I know that it squashes the prints down a little bit. Yeah. So I don't um I really only use it to test mechanical devices that I'm creating. So I've not oh and this that's too much wobble in it too. You can see the whole bed wobbly. Yeah, that that's why I want I mount my bed rigid. Right. Yeah, I'm gonna have to change that for sure. That's a lot of wobble. Yeah. So when I suggest you, uh, since you have another I'm printer, have to get another extruder and that e and um yeah. Well, now since you probed the bed once. I would yeah. suggest you to rigid mount the belt plate and oh. re rerun the calib the printer calibration, rerun the bed leveling. Okay. And you should pretty good to go. Pretty like the bed shouldn't move as much as it does. It shouldn't move at all actually. Well yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is like I don't know if you can see in the camera how much it's moving, but significant. Uh, I think it's, we're 94%. Oh, cool. So that's about your time. So, now the time is we're 13 minutes and uh, 14 minutes, 94%. Okay, cool. So, E, is that estimated time or something? What? <laughs> Showing the time, oh, there's a time that has a E in front of it. Oh, uh, it's the time that is running. Yeah, it's just strange that there's an E in front of the time. Well, I set it in, in, in the software for it to show the time. No, I think it's cool. I'm just saying the fact that it's... You see, the oh. nozzle is rubbing. Yeah, the van's rubbing, too. All right. Yeah, it's not perfect on top. <laughs> no, it's not. So, but I'm happy where it's at right now. Ah, most of the job is done. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and maybe add something there. Um, all right, let me do this real quick. Just happy to be able to help you with that tonight. I really appreciate that. You're welcome. So the rest is up to you. Okay. If you need more advice, let me know. But I would suggest.